Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of the K2, this is the Simpsons Index, the 138th episode spectacular. So spectacular. What a spectacle. I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me out of the tomb is Claire Double R. Hey, Elliot. Jordan Frost. I sure am. And Danny Rosewell. Well, I'm Danny Rosewell. And here, as always, except when he's not... Uh, oh, he's actually not here. Oh. Oh. I miss Burnt Toast Calloway. <laughs> yeah, Beach Thing Calloway. Beach Thing Calloway. <laughs> <laughs> and joining you for The Simpsons Index. This is a podcast where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there's a twist. Each episode must come from a different decade. And yeah, of course, this is at the podcast number 138. So we're going to do the 138th episode spectacular because numbers... I'm, Bikini I'm Thong Calloway. I said like. <laughs> 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 Why do they call you Bikini Thong? <laughs> oh, he's not here to answer. We'll just have to assume. <laughs> he's not here to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is still a normal podcast. We're still going to get to the 138th episode at the end. First, we got to go through two other episodes mm. like this one. First, we watched an episode from the HD era. This was season 24, episode four, Gone A B Gone. First released in November of 2012, directed by Matthew Nastuck, written by Joel H. Cohen. In this episode, Grandpa goes missing and in trying to find him, Homer and Marge discover that he had another wife, a jazz singer named Rita LaFleur. And in the B story, Lisa uh, bets her college fund on an online poker site. Hey, what do we think? <laughs> Who wants to go first? I want to go first. I almost really liked it, but I hated it. <laughs> How could you almost really like it? That's far too close to liking it. Oh, it, no, I still anyway. hated it. I still hated it. Oh, my it. God, it was such garbage. I liked the episode that it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the episode I was thinking about. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> Instead it. of watching this episode. You kind of phased out and were just thinking, oh, of, you went to your where, happy would place. I, where would I take this episode if I were me? <laughs> <sighs> to the bin. Hmm. Yeah, this was sucky, suck, suck. Yeah, it was really bad. I yeah. mean, it was everything that we've come to expect from <laughs> HD, really. like We're just numb. <laughs> oh, man. It's it's disjointed. Yeah. It's out of character. Yeah. It's poorly gagged. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Poorly um, gagged. Like, to, a... <laughs> like an amateur S&M enthusiast. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. Poorly amateur gagged. and consenting Thank you, yes. S&M enthusiast. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, we'll start with you, Jordan. For better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you from this episode? <sighs> I think it was the bit towards the end where I realized I just stopped taking notes. <laughs> yeah, I did too. What was your last note the on last your page? The last note I had, I think it was about the heroin joke. Mm. Oh. And then I just drew the squiggly line down going, it's yeah. gone all downhill. Even from like kind of below sea level, it went even further downhill. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, mine was around the same scene as well. Hot for my dad was like oh. the last one for me. Yeah. Because you were there recently for another one of those uh, weird run of Simpson and heroin jokes, weren't you? Yeah, this is like the fourth in like three episodes or something, haven't you done with heroin jokes? And it's just yeah, weird. Crazy. Did they just go through a period where they're like, hey, now that... Now the writers are on heroin. Now that yeah. like <laughs> there's a an Oxycontin epidemic as opposed mm. to a heroin epidemic. Heroin um, jokes are cool now. Heroin yeah. jokes are cool yeah. now. It's, you might say it's chic. Mm. But yeah, I remember because one of the last ones we did with you, the airplane pilot who was fine and then... Yeah, and then suddenly he's like, yeah, I did a bunch of heroin. You're like, yeah. yeah. These guys okay. don't know how heroin works. No, they don't. <laughs> they know saying the H word makes you go, uh... I'm a completely lucid and intellectual black Heroin jazz user. singer, but you oh. say the H word and suddenly, uh... Yeah. No, but she was always kind of relaxed and uh, kind of not relaxed. all there. Yeah, man. It's yeah. a southern drawl. <laughs> yeah, but they kind of... <laughs> that's not a fucking yeah. missed out drawl. Yeah, but they were trying to make her like, you know, a jazz singer. She's just a cool cat, you know? Yeah, yeah. She didn't seem spaced out, and, like man. passing out yeah. from an ex-heroin addiction. Like, I just... Where the fuck were they going with that joke? Uh, they didn't go anywhere. It was uh, just there for you to be disappointed with. Yeah, 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 exactly. And how about you, Claire? What's a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? All right, I'm going to try to scrape the bottom of the barrel here to find something here that I didn't think was total garbage. The one joke that I think that, like gained a little bit of a smile was they rock up to the Spiro's bar or something and the two mm. dogs are mm. snarling at each other mm. on the chains. Yeah. And then the chains snap and the two dogs just look at each other like, 
oh shit now what <laughs> and you know go their separate ways whimpering oh yeah but that was the funniest moment in the show and it was completely inconsequential to all plot points yeah. so it's really really sad isn't it that that's yeah. the best one that i can think of it's also in this bit in this biker bar that you know when he's doing the flashbacks used to be a classy restaurant and that wasn't even a point it yeah, was, exactly. No, like what what happened between now and then and it was like a classy 30s era like nightclub except suddenly it was like the 70s when homer was a child he was six so it would have been like mid 70s it was yeah. like that um bar where it's always hallo- uh, halloween New Year's Eve. <laughs> happy new yes. year's eve yeah yeah thank you i have some serious discrepancies with the time period of this film i was asking about like what era is this supposed to be because at one point it's like 20s and then 40s but it's like this weird jazz club and then you're like oh wait they said that abe Abe was 35 35. but he looks like 55 yeah Yeah. he's got the voice of a much older man yep yeah and then but homer was six homer six so yeah when when was this homer being six right he's speaking like a two-year-old as well which really threw me off that was a very like are you okay, Papi? Like, yeah. the Except it was fuck worse. It was like something to do. You okay, Papi? Yeah. It was like, yeah, his young voice was terrible. Dan, get some notes on that and redo it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Dan. <laughs> I didn't say Danny. I said Dan. <laughs> and how about you, Danny? For better or worse, what's an episode that episode F- this episode? Sorry. For better or worse. <laughs> uh. We've all been like, basically we've shut down our brains over the last half an hour yes. to be able to get through the episode. And now <laughs> none of us can talk. I was just thinking we were on energy saving mode. That's what we <laughs> did. I just don't want to talk about this yeah. episode. All right. Well, what really stood out to me was Lisa winning $500,000, slowly upgrading to Yale, blah, blah, blah. Suddenly she loses it all in a fit of peak, as you do with casino gambling. That's like the moral of ga- gambler. Yeah. And then suddenly Bart comes in and he's like, guess what? It was me all along. I was Sideshow Bob. You've still got lots of money. And she's like, wait. But uh, straight away, they figured out that we were under 18 somehow. And they took it all back. Uh, but you've still got the original 5,000. Yay. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, it just really felt like cheap shitty writing to me i did it, not enjoy that it was dumb that one you could customize your avatar to be you essentially oh, yes. or crazy. anyone else yeah but also the fact that it was completely dependent on the plot as to whether they could hear or see <laughs> you because at some point they're like yeah. you know we can hear you right but it's yeah. like yeah well then you should have figured out that it was a young girl or a young boy's voice or something or- like, also she kept saying what cards she had four yeah. Queens, yeah. By the way. she had four queens oh my god why didn't she go all in on the first hand <laughs> that's such a good point lisa and- was not displaying any intelligence in the she episode. totally no. said she had a no. full house before like sideshow bob's four threes turned up yeah. Also, we kind of saw that Bart was not great at cards, but he was only losing a little bit of money, and then suddenly he's like... He would have had to have had enough to match yeah. Lisa's bet. Yeah, he exactly. needed at least 400000 No, it's just ultra-convenient storytelling. And like, and then they lose a million dollars, minus five grand they started with, Yeah, and they just like shrug, like, oh, well, million dollars, whatever. And yeah. yeah, they try to play it with a whole fucking... Oh, why did you do that for me, Bart? Because uh, I really love you. And like, oh, he didn't that even was say love. He just said like. Awful. As if that hasn't been established over 28 seasons already. Like, once again, why in HD era do they insist on redoing themes or plots from their original classic era? Like, Marge's gambling was quite a touching way of addressing like a gambling issue. She wasn't betting, you know, the entire house or anything like that, but she was no longer present with her kids. She was wasting money. And like there was an impact, an emotional impact on the family. Like the first time that Bart was telling Lisa, she actually is pretty. Don't make me say it. Of course I love you. You're really pretty. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. That was super nice 30 years ago. To me, they yeah, blitzed through a whole episodes of plot like in a couple of yeah. scenes. Yeah, yeah man. Um, oh, God, what stands out to me? Fuck, I don't know. Just because we haven't mentioned it. Yeah, the whole opening with Homer going through the drive through and the onion mm, rings that yeah. set oh, up yeah. this whole chain of events. It's kind of annoying because it started out as a Homer plot point that got passed to a Lisa plot point and then they had to make a new Homer plot point (laughs) out of thin air. Yes, I dislike Mm -hmm. that. It's part of this disappointing storytelling that like Homer wasn't at all a part of Lisa's story from then on. Yeah, Mm -hmm. He gives her a little push and says, now go. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The thing is, it wasn't just a little push. They could have done it way more subtly. Firstly, it was so forced about how they even got 
into putting the money that he won from the court case onto the poker site. I don't Friends really trust bar. banks. Yeah, I don't trust banks. As if Mo would put it on a poker site. He'd put it on a sock under his bed and use it to bash a robber. For real. Like, yeah. he'd, he'd get it in pennies, you know Are what I mean? I mean, poker sites don't have interest accrual or anything, surely. This yeah, but banks can sometimes have negative interest where they take it off you. Or fees. Yeah, you know? banking fees. Ridiculous. Right. But like, they had to so push it. Like, push and push and push to make Homer put his money onto this. It was just, like, rehashed over and over again, this idea, by every character at the bar. And then he had to push it onto Lisa as well. There was that whole scene where he's just like, yes, your college fund is on a poker site. Oh, yes, dude. I've got a t-shirt that yeah. says that your college fund is on a poker site. They yeah, I'm the parent of a child. Many, didn't they? And then, you know what annoyed me the most about the scene? The t-shirt said, I'm a parent of a child that has his college fund on the poker site. And yep. then he made and Lisa he wear it. On the child. Mm. That's not how that shirt's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, but I thought it was just like, it's fine, honey. See, look, you get to wear daddy's shirt. Everything's fine. I still hated it. I yeah, hated I hate it. So it. But, but I'm say, giving it much more credit than it totally deserves. But it kind you of... cockeyed optimist. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Elliot? A young Barry Mumphreys, if you were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, it's part of my problem with this episode is that it's just so padded out. I have, like, the fewest notes that I have of any episode. I barely yeah. got into yeah. my second page of my book. And that's the thing. All of these plot points to me could have been really interesting if they weren't just, like, racing through them because they spend all their time just fucking around, you know? Yeah, a search for grandpa. That should be interesting. Totally. Going Grandpa has chest. a second marriage yeah. to a hot jazz singer. He has a second life as a jazz writer. The jazz song was shit, by the way, but you got to forgive that. <laughs> like, yeah, they made that as boring a plot point as you possibly could. Oh, and my God. My other problem with HD, and here we go. <laughs> I constantly point this out. I think the writers are calling for help because they are continually poking fun <laughs> at how bad their own show is and how shit their plot points are. Because he finds his little like coaster from years ago, like this place changed my life. He went, aha, a flimsy lead. And then runs <laughs> yes. out the door, which would be funny, but it actually, I feel like it's a call for help. <laughs> Simpsons writers, mm. write to us. We will help you. We yeah. will go fund your legal fees to get you out of this contract. Okay, in the 430th frame of your next episode, put a little dot in the right hand corner of, uh, you of your animation yeah <laughs> wait a minute anagram experts what's uh, spiro's bar <laughs> like, is, is that, <laughs> actually um, say uh help they've got me locked up here rob i spar you know i'm starting to picture just that monty burns vault where he keeps all the monkeys with the typewriters you know chained there and smoking that's what i'm picturing like they're just fucked like, yeah i'd sorry. take the blurst of times over this episode yeah me too <laughs> i think everyone is really curious to find out more about the blurst of times yeah the novel that um you know what really <laughs> grinds my gears monkey. <laughs> that friggin i just the idea that oh grandpa's missing he's wandered off he might turn up dead let's go through his underwear drawer to see if there's a clue that he's left us as to where he's gone yeah what kind of bullshit is that and then they take like his old army chest out of his closet and go through it for clues as to where he's wandered off surely if you're looking for clues you'd have to know all the stuff that was in there and then find what was missing rather than what was left behind for real oh and also she uh, fucked up his mirror i remember you were in oh, yeah. i was so angry it's like what was the point of like yeah this this is a hard candy scratch 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 and okay, like not just a it. little scratch on the mirror she just like fucking scratch right across that shit yeah four oh. times oh. ruining that mirror play count how many times have you seen this episode before today never not ever uh, slim to none. I have only watched this once. This is actually one that I realized that I missed until worst episode ever covered it. And then I was like, oh, that was a bit of crap. What did they think? They thought it was a bit of crap. Okay. Wow. How low on their list was it? I don't know, actually. That's uh, right. Wacky Nurse. Was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? There was a bit that I really hated the escalation of. When Lisa first tries to win the money back and then Bart is outside blowing on the window uh, and Flanders yeah. comes along and then he blows on the window for some reason, which was just like a stupid Hi. down arrow into a wacky note. And then Bart getting repelled down the chimney by Millhouse. And the reason for that was got to keep her sense of wonder alive. Yeah. Oh my God. This is their sixth worst episode ever. Wow. Uh, I don't think it deserves that. No, um, I'm pretty sure it's like, it's not as aggravating as some of the other episodes, but it is so soulless that yeah, it's maybe. depressing in its own way. Yeah, true. Uh, sorry, you were saying about the chimney winch. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd call Bart a winch, but he's... A comely maiden? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a virtue true? 
yeah, just for him to just suddenly stick his head down the chimney. I mean, for one, he would have been covered in soot. Also, Milhouse, you need to be on call 24-7 just in case she ever comes into this room. I could believe Milhouse would do that. But look, my problem... But I problem... don't believe Flanders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? That was very strange. And look, the whole problem with it is Bart should never be Lisa's conscious. At least not as a joke. Like, it just didn't make sense. You know, she's the one telling him, get away from my money. Like stop spending my future which is actually quite a sad situation for her to be in and then within like two minutes the tables have turned and Bart's like you should stop now like when he was the one literally two minutes before that was doing it yeah it didn't make sense I think what they were trying to say is that like she has her blind spots too and maybe that's something where Bart excels but in this scenario it isn't like are you saying that she's kind of like hereditarily predisposed to gambling because of her mother well look I'm rewriting it now they could have just left the Bart part out of it entirely. They could have said, look, here's $5,000, Lisa, and I've kept it safe in a poker site because you can't trust those banks. And then maybe she could be going, what the heck is $5,000 going to get me in this economy? Yeah. Like, I've got to try to up this. You yeah. know, I'm smart. I know maths. Like, yeah. her downfall is usually her belief in her own intelligence mm. is going to fix everything. Like, yeah. So that could have been a plot point where there was actually a bit of a spiral of like, I'm trying to do this for the right reasons. I really want to fix my future, but now it's all messed up. But instead, the way that she fell into it when she was so against it in the first place made no sense to me. Yeah, and even like the escalation, it was just so rushed. It was just all of a sudden Lisa's crazy pants over gambling mm-hmm. and coming back from the other. And just to like shoehorn in like a brief Jennifer Tilly cameo as well. <laughs> she was always on those celebrity poker things. That's yeah. a mm-hmm. nice flimsy connection to get her yeah. in the episode. Quick, let's pay attention to her boobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, one of the guest stars of the episode, Jennifer Tilly. Oh. Who's Jennifer Tilly? She was the bride in Bride of Chucky. Yeah. Uh, she was Bonnie in Family Guy, the one that was always pregnant. Oh, uh, yeah. Joe's wife. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And she also starred in Bound with Gina Gershon, which for me was a very formative experience for a young 12 year old with Foxtel. <laughs> you were allowed her- to watch it, Elliot? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stayed up and her and Gina Gershon, you know, they. They bump their fists together. Oh, bro, bro, <laughs> wow. bro, bro. You know how lesbians do. <laughs> yeah. Editing Bay LJ here to say that, look, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention that Jennifer Tilly was at one point married to Sam Simon, who of course was one of the founding executive producers of The Simpsons. They divorced in 91, but in the last few years before Sam passed away, they actually spent a lot of time together and from all reports, we yeah, were quite friendly. In fact, during Sam Simon's interview on Mark Maron's podcast, Jennifer Tilly makes a background appearance. All right, well, I've mentioned that now, so back to the show. <laughs> oh, I had another wacky bit. Another wacky bit? Abe just watches his son get dragged behind his car for a good five yes! seconds. Were they just going to drive off without Homer anyway? Like, I guess so, because they're like, hey, we're going to go celebrate our honeymoon and just fuck for hours. <laughs> um, but then he's like looking in the mirror going, oh my God, my son is getting dragged. Oh, I better hit the brake now. And then yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was very whack. Mm. <laughs> it wasn't just wacky. It was whack. Yeah. It actually, it was, it was wacky how like Tiny Homer was really accident prone. And Not it, just that's accident prone. It's really like, strange. It was like he had some sort of motor sensory like yeah. He was tonguing an electrical socket. Yeah. Yes. Are they saying that Abe and this must Rita be... gave him brain damage? This must be post crayon. Yeah. And Homer like really spelling it out. Duh, I'm remembering why I don't remember this anymore. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, this is my problem with dumb Homer. Like, it borders on an embarrassing stereotype of mental disability. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It stops being like, oh, he's a bit slow or he does, you know. In this, he's really portrayed as stupid or... special needs yeah. to the point that he would never have gotten through high school or married yeah. that much. Well, he didn't. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I guess from that angle, it's a fine enough plot point that Abe realizes that he needs to be there for his son and not jet setting around Europe, I guess. Well, it wasn't genuine. It was such a turnaround quickly, like, oh, it's something I really care about my son, but he didn't really seem to Total. give a shit. They talked about him being neglectful like 10 yeah. seconds earlier. So mm-hmm. they didn't even build up that Homer was in the story. It's just no. like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, I'm there. All oh, by the way, sudden, Homer's there suddenly. It's yeah. like they're making out in the booth and Homer's in the nightclub at night in the club. What? What is going on? What is going on? And just a single scene of just Homer at home. Where were you all night, Dad? I got hurt or something. Like, Makes yeah, sense. That's all that you need to build that works. <laughs> like, yeah, he must have really hurt himself that he just completely wiped 
all of this from I, his memory. Well, also, it could have been the alcohol poisoning because he's at the airport. They're like, well, let's go and forget this ever happened. And then they just... And he gets served, And the barman yeah. give him a beer. <laughs> it was a different time. Oh. They're really pushing the whole alternate timeline shit. Guess yeah. what, guys? Nobody remembers this. This is why nobody remembers it, I swear. Really trying to, like, glue it in there. Oh, for real. And the other wacky thing I want to mention before we move on is when they are at Spiro's and Homer getting uh, lifted up by the pool cues. Mm. How did mm-hmm. that make everyone feel? Not- Very uncomfortable. I, look, Actually, I didn't mind the sneeze out the, the chalk sneeze. gag. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was all right. I think that they've done much worse gross animation of people getting hurt or Homer. Yes. Like the fact that they didn't show like his nostrils coming and flipping over his own scalp, that kind of thing, <laughs> which is what I would come to expect from a more HD season experience. <laughs> yeah, sneezing blue chalk was yeah. kind of reserved. Yeah, I was about to say, it, the fact that it was just his nose kind of getting a little stretched mm, was yeah. very or him subtle slowly from sinking them. further down the screws as they oh. just like go up into his head. Yeah. Oh. And then you see them poking out yeah, like an yeah, antenna. Yeah, yeah. The heart, the heart. <laughs> Let's move on. What about the heart of the episode? Oh, Oh, well, the you know, if the God, pool cues the went straight through his heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bart really likes his sister. Not like likes, definitely not loves his sister, but he likes his sister. And he's not afraid to say it, except in that awkward teen way. He's not even a teen. I know, he's like 40 now. That was so half-baked, though. I mean, it was terrible. If they set it up like, such a Bob, he's cleaning me out every other hand or something yeah. like that, yeah. you know, there was some kind of rivalry and... Or cluing yes. the audience in on that The guy well. with the scar, the rival. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the why did he have no to be avatar. Sideshow Bob? Like, couldn't he have been, like, a mystery guest, you know? I love it. Yeah, it's not like Kelsey Grammer was in the episode anyway. Mm. Like, El Barto. My main thing is, like, they were obviously trying to push the point of Grandpa being a good father to Homer in some way. Yep. Which is a complete rewrite of every previous history. Where Solid point. Where his father is actually quite neglectful and has set him up for a lot of his insecurities and poor parenting that he does to his kids. Yeah. His relationship with his dad has been addressed many times before before and it's never been you know you were a great dad it's like okay you did the best you could and i have to come to terms with that that episode where they both burned down the house yeah that was all about how they both come to terms with how neglectful and abusive he was yeah and they both realize that they're gonna screw up you know that they're Mm. not perfect and that's a much more meaningful conclusion to come to if they really wanted to redo that history they needed to spend more time on it to build up you know like Abe, I don't know, suffering after Homer's mum leaves him, has to take on this job that he doesn't give a shit about. That's it. They just kind of gloss over the story points and just sort of leave it to the audience to extrapolate a lot of exactly. this stuff. Exactly. But you know what? This whole thing it hinges on him being like this hardworking single dad, yeah. having to work as a waiter yeah. or a busboy when he actually wants to write songs. That is not Abe. He is not a creative person. That's Fraser like, Crane's dad. <laughs> It is. I've watched that episode recently. There is like the subtle thing that we're like, we've seen in even the pilot episode that we reviewed the other week with launching the pilot episode 135 of The Simpsons Index, where Grandpa is playing the piano. So we know he can play at least. Click the link below, guys. (laughs) (laughs) What up, YouTube? Yeah, that's a skill that's passed down in The Simpsons gene, obviously, because Homer Mm. can play. Homer can play. That's true. (laughs) Since when could he write a song? Yeah. Yeah, so it's not something that I don't buy, but I get it from the perspective that he is such a gruff and grizzled dude that... And at 35 years old, he's there, like, smiling sort of happily, like, oh, I'm just going to sneak off and write some more of my song. Like, (laughs) no, he's 35 years old. His wife just left him. He's got a kid that he doesn't even particularly like and has never had to pay attention to before. Yeah, this dude should be way depressed. Way, like, way more him. Like, he didn't strike me as grandpa, except for the fact that he had an old man voice. But I can imagine, much like Marty Crane... That he would have a big affinity for Frank Sinatra. Sorry, we've been watching a lot of Frasier in this house. <laughs> have I've... you watched the one where Frasier tried to throw out Marty's chair yet? Yes. yes. Oh, oh, oh that's season early five seasons. Now. Yeah. yeah, we were. Yeah. Guys, 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 save well it for on. the question where he's like, what things have you been getting into lately? <laughs> <laughs> Ancient reruns of Frasier. <laughs> that's going to be Claire's the, thing. Yeah, the whole household is doing it because I monopolize the TV time. <laughs> but just before we move on from the heart, we haven't actually talked about no. much about uh, Ray de la Fleur, who was the other guest star for this episode, Annika Noni Rose. Does that name sound familiar to any of you? No. Say it three she, times fast. No. She played Tiana in The Princess and the Frog. Oh, cool. Aww. 
Um, I'm glad you're getting work still, but please take better parts. Wow, it's been a long time since that movie came out, according yeah, to this she- voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she's mostly a stage actor doing a lot okay. of Broadway shows and stuff, but movie-wise, she was also the lead in Dreamgirls, but Disney still get her along to do a lot of Tiana stuff. Like mm. She's been in a lot of the video games, and she was in the cool. latest Wreck-It Ralph movie that had a scene. The Princesses. Uh, the princesses, princesses yeah. yeah. I've only watched that clip on YouTube. Yeah. I haven't seen yeah. the movie yet. Neither. Uh, what do we think of her and her characterization and all that sort of stuff? Almost great, but not. Completely arbitrary, I thought, yeah. to be honest. She like, kind of swung matter. between coming off as a switched on intelligent person and then suddenly she was like just dropping jazz bombs left and right. Also, she said yeah way too many times. Yeah. Um, but she was cool and hip. Yeah. I Out think the sight. point is that she was built up in to be this like world famous star. She's got all these like posters in her own home of like her global tours and she toured Europe, yeah. obviously. Is it normal to have posters of yourself all over your wall? You know, when you're a fallen star, yeah. Yeah, when you got nothing else left in your life and you want to look back on the glory days, <laughs> I think that's perfectly posters acceptable. Posters of other people, of your heroes? So of- you mean the frame posters that I have in my room of me going, that's all the mustard in the house. <laughs> 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 oh, no, it's okay when you do uh, it, Elliot. Sorry, sorry. Oh, thank you, thank this you. This is a conversation for another day. Really, I was worried po- these were indirect comments about me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's the poster of you that says, I'm never tapping out. Or, you know, because, yeah. you know, oh, that, that was, was the glory days. <laughs> yeah, that was from season one. <laughs> oh, my God. The intervention in <laughs> um, I felt that she could have been anyone. It didn't. I don't know that I cared anything but about. She's got her. a very yeah. attractive voice, yeah. right? Yep. And they did a nice very job sultry. on her character model, so she was pleasant to look at, and she sounded good. Also, she could brush her own hair with her legs. Yeah, that was a character trait. Yeah. And play piano with her feet. I mean, they that's really had to put that talented in. feet. So they were using that to kind of push her as a sex object, weren't they? And a senior citizen sex object. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And see, that's the thing. She was so. Sexy. interchangeable with literally mm. any other attractive female. You could yes. have popped her in there yes. with any sort of plot line. I mean, I thought she was going to go, I'm sorry, Abe, you can't take Homer overseas. He's too dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like that could have been a little bit more believable at that point of the episode because he was acting really if, like. Well, that would have also explained like future grandpa's resentment towards Homer. Yeah. Like, nice. Yeah. Rather than it being grandpa's reluctant choice, like it being a decision that was made for him and him not getting it. Despite the fact that they were dragging him behind their car and yeah. leaving him clearly to go on their honeymoon. And probably she didn't being actually... the cause of all of his little problems. <laughs> was the plan to drive off and leave Homer standing on the side of the road? That and was what I thought. This is what I mean. <laughs> he just left him alone and then dragged him behind the car. Well, he was at City Hall and he was opposite a beautiful church. So he would have been fine. Probably. Wandered into a church and found an orphanage. <laughs> yeah. Sanctuary! <laughs> Sanctuary! But ultimately, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? No. I'm going to say no because it was an end anti Barton Lisa's story and I, I like Barton Lisa's stories but this was like it's kind of frustrating actually I'm, I'm getting agitated watching it and then it shits on a bit of the canon yeah we've been going on about all about how grandpa doesn't feel like himself no. yeah I wouldn't say like for the rest of the family there's any major breaks they're not the best version of themselves oh, Flanders is way off Flanders is way off yeah. actually yeah, yeah good point Bart didn't really do it for me I can buy it it's just that was underdeveloped that... it was just poorly done yeah. yeah like I've seen him be the pranky child that walks off and blows raspberries on the window I've seen him declare his undying love for Lisa they, they just none of them were handled right but yes or no would you watch this one again no nope no but I would have fun doing a rewrite alright let's do it you start uh, uh. go on have fun <laughs> Rosewell uh, well Okay, what if they don't notice Homer on the back of the car and they drag him along and he does die and... (laughs) (laughs) I like this story. And everything else is a fever death dream. Yeah, I like it. (laughs) (laughs) And and he's like, wait, I don't remember this, but I was in it, but I died? Hang on. And it turns out there was a second Homer. He has another child later. No, no, no. This is... Okay, this is getting worse. Uh, Oh, Jew. No. Okay. Um, I didn't like how Lisa got in to the poker so what about if instead of she sees bart playing poker then she's like well i can play poker at least i'll make some money back what if instead it's homer that's playing poker first off because he's all like poker 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 and then he just conveniently walks away and leaves himself logged in um Mm. what if instead he's playing poker and she's looking over his shoulder at how shit he is and she's like don't you know the statistics of seven and a two off suit don't you know how improbable this is don't you know that oh my Mm. god can't you even count these cards and so like she gets drawn in trying to protect him from losing her money which is like her fun yeah yeah well actually yeah i'm gonna build on that because my thing that i would change is that 
Lisa, I think she would have a major problem with getting money to go to college by gambling. I think that would go True. against her moral stance and her ethics and i think that her kind of getting into it we've kind of had that with marge and i think it doesn't work when you do it with lisa as well can i i totally agree can i bounce back yes i also think that um sorry i got distracted by bouncy backs um that's a front (laughs) (laughs) and a front to what yuck 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 uh (laughs) i would also like to see instead of the thing where suddenly it turns out that she's lost all her money then it suddenly turns out that bart won all the money then it suddenly turns out they lost all the money anyway and everything resets to normal blah 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 blah. what about if she did win all the money but then like it's a fucking poker site and they just scam them all it turns out you can't cash out your money or they close down they keep all the money or you can only cash out in gift vouchers for poker dollars or you know yeah yeah oh i suppose mm-hmm. the poker site isn't this better than the banks yeah it's not reliable at all why did i give all my money to, to a poker site yeah dig it and how about you claire what would you like to change <sighs> so many things <laughs> so many things so many things something about the boobs what? remember when lisa gives a tip Michael to the blue play oh the boobs is growing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no no no, no. i've bar, seen that kind yeah. of fetish before Online. Inflation. Yeah. You <laughs> economist. <laughs> no, I saw there was a really great post of someone who, a kid who posted in R inflation. Like, hi, I'm 12. I've got this inflation fetish. Does anyone have any YouTube videos? It's like, uh, wrong subreddit, dude. This is about economic inflation. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, jeez. You see them sometimes where it goes the other way, where like they post on our trees about my shrubbery won't grow and all these guys, our trees, of course, being a marijuana subreddit. Oh, they're right. They're all like, well, what you should try doing is pruning on the back of the thing. Or... <laughs> yeah, well, they would be good horticulturalists. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, if we're going to go with the root of the heart, right? And <laughs> retconning like... <laughs> What? I don't know. The root of the heart. It's another subreddit that he likes. Anyway. <laughs> uh, it's not a, like a really poorly named Mills and Boone. <laughs> <laughs> That's the heart of the root. Cool An Australian friends. version. Oh, <laughs> bloody oath. Uh, look, if we're, going, we're back. if we're going to you know, retcon Grandpa Simpson being a deadbeat dad, they are obviously doing a really shitty attempt at trying to say that he was a father that cared and he made sacrifices for Homer, blah, 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 blah. I would actually focus on that as the main plot line. I'd probably get rid of the whole poker thing because I just feel like there's no winners in that ultimately. Like, we don't need to learn the anti-gambling lesson. Lisa doesn't need to learn it. She and Bart have already learned it from dealing with their mom. Just focus on Grandpa goes missing when they try to go visit him, find out about his previous marriage. That's all fine still, but I wouldn't have him so, you know, happy with his lot i want to see a little bit more of the difficulties of him as a single parent like with his wife has just left him yeah totally, you know totally. like having to bring his kid to work because they've got no babysitters mm, you know yeah. this is even better than homer dying in the flashback and the, <laughs> the fact is like busboys don't make a lot of money maybe yeah. rita says well maybe you can make a bit more money like you play the piano come accompany me because she's taken a liking to him yeah that's how that starts up makes more sense because he's not like he wouldn't be in the mood to be like i just want to write you know cute jazzy love songs like yeah and then have a bit more about homer reacting to who's this new woman like where's my mom actually yeah she can still leave at the end that's yeah. fine like yeah. no i want to tour the world like i'm not ready to settle down and have a kid yeah fine he yeah. has to make the decision to stay with homer because homer has already been abandoned once yeah in well, a very short space of time they already said it right like when she he goes, oh, I like men on the rebound because they feel like they've done something wrong and and I can fix them up. Ooh, and dad like had furniture? Oh, fucking Ugh. Hell. Yeah. And as for what I'd change, look, I really like all these ideas, especially it being Rita's choice that like, no, you've got a son to look after. I'll, yeah. I'll go to Europe, you know, thanks for the songs, bye. And I totally agree with you, Claire. Fuck the poker thing off. They didn't know what they were doing with it, so why oh. do it? And because this has been one of these episode reviews that's less about the actual episode, more about what was wrong, what could have been better. Yeah. Just for the sake of something different, I do kind of like them trying to find Grandpa and them going through his footlocker and using these little things and trying to find clues about mm. where he's gone. And it could have mm. been like a clip show episode about his past. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would work. Like, yeah, one of those but, clip shows of clips we haven't seen before. Yeah, those sort exactly. of things. I never knew he was a ping pong champion or something. Yeah. You know, oh, like give me a things. Forrest Gumpy bit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And <gasps> did you have something quickly you wanted to... I did have one to... more note. Today on Daniel Doesn't Want to Shut Up. <laughs> so I was thinking about how he said, don't like the poker bit at all. And I just thought had the thought about, what if they don't play poker at all? What if he puts the money into the poker account, but then like he has to hide that it's in poker from Marge, who has a gambling addiction. And every time uh-huh. she hears about poker, she gets twitchy and her eyes get wide. And he's like, look, we're not even playing poker with it, but my money's in here. And if she finds out, she's going to freak out and have a, full ba- a, a fallback. Relapse. A relapse. Yeah. Mm. 
look, I think that could work. I just feel like that's a bit of a dead end plot line. Sorry. Like, <laughs> no, no, like it's a good setup. It makes sense with the garbage that they put in front of us, but there's really nowhere that that can go. Either she finds out and tries to gamble the money away and then it's just a rehash of her previous gambling addiction or she doesn't find out and then what? Like, what? Wh- where? What? Well, I mean, combining it with the other idea that Lisa's looking over Homer's shoulder, he's doing really badly and then she starts taking over at home and it's like, oh, okay, you got this kid. Keep playing on my account. And then Marge starts looking over the shoulder. Or it could be Marge yeah. is like super keen to get onto this site. Like she finds out and she goes in there and finds out that Lisa is like now addicted and even though she's winning. Now she feels like, really guilty. She has to pull Lisa out guilty. of there. Exactly. And, yeah. that, like, and save her from Gamblor. <laughs> exactly. Yes, and, and they call it Gambler Two, the Electric <laughs> Boogaloo or something, you know? <laughs> electric Neon Mothra. Boogaloo. Yeah, because of his absolutely. Neon Claws. <laughs> so, guest stars of the episode. The only other one besides the one I mentioned was Marvin Hamlish. Ooh. Oh, that was actually him. That was actually the okay. Marvin Hamlish. Uh-huh. You know Marvin Hamlish, I'm guessing. No, Marvin. no, I was just saying. I, I thought. They've name dropped this guy in the episode. Yeah, he said one line. I bet they fucking got him into guest star. Yeah, to yeah, look, do that so, one line. So yeah, this dude is. He actually died not that long after oh. he recorded his part for this episode, and yeah, he wasn't even around. From to see. shame. Yeah, <laughs> we miss you, Marvin. Sorry, Shout out. in peace. But no, he's a conductor, and he's also a film score and composer, and he's one of these dudes that if you look up his IMDb, you have to scroll for years to see all of his credits. Okay. It's ridiculous. Highly recommend checking it out. And it was actually one of the jokes that I did like. Abraham, I, I pay you to wait tables, not write songs. And Marvin Hamlish, I pay you to write songs not wait tables yeah i thought it was, it was fine yeah that was know, cute but i'm so passionate about waiting tables i thought yeah. that was cute any other notes claire a couple of jokes that i didn't mind again not great but you know here we are <laughs> when they were talking about the american banking system it's like oh we're perfectly in line with the rest of the third world i like that mm, little like mm, dig big, at america yeah. and then there was a little um calendar joke where grandpa's visit is written in on a blue moon you know, once yep, in a blue moon. Yep. Yeah. Ah, cute. Uh, and then he writes in, talk to calendar. Yeah, didn't Did not like that, like that yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, a subtle joke followed by an overt of the overt. Yeah, because yep. they said it to camera and then we spent two seconds of him writing it down in the calendar. Again, and, so much padding. And if I could take one more, the really, really aggravating joke about the Greek name being oh, super yeah. long. Yeah. Yeah. And the French name as well. Like, Rita the what? <sighs> Yeah, yeah. What? everyone remembers the long name. Greek name. No one remembers flower. Uh, the thing was, it was like making fun of Greek names. Yeah, though. it was. Yeah. It exactly. Wasn't, it wasn't like just a complicated normal Greek name. It was an over the top. Fake ass yeah. bullshit. And like, it wasn't repeated once. It was repeated it twice. Was, yeah. And then backed with that, the what? And oh, uh, aggravating. Yeah. How about you, Jordan? Any other notes? I did not like the thought bubble within the thought bubble within the thought bubble. Ugh. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a good episode with that, with the story within the story within the story being told yeah. by different narrators and stuff. But this is just dumb. And then Felt Marge used. Is... And then just for Bernice and Hibbert to have this little tiff oh. in the thought Marge bubble. Marge shrinking away. And then Homer. A bit that I thought was kind of cute was Homer blocking the ears of Marge's thought bubble yeah, while he, he said onion vegetables ring. anyway. Yeah. Well, onion rings. I don't rings, think onion rings no. count as vegetables. They're vegetables. And we need to speak about your diet. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes into the next room and he's like oh no that's what bubble march said thought bubble march yeah that we should put it in a college fund yeah, yeah. i kind of actually didn't mind the wacky races opening me either that was all right yeah, yeah that was kind of cute because they didn't go really stupid with it yeah i thought it was stylistically cool but again i sort of got a glimpse of the padding that would come in this episode yeah. when abe slowly crosses the finish line and that's mm. a fine enough joke but they hung on homer for like two seconds and then he went dull yeah, and yeah. it was just so drawn out, and it's like yeah. uh, it was a really long couch gag without yeah. when it could have been a quick couch gag. Yeah, comparatively, yeah. I have a big down arrow that they still make jokes that like drunk driving is cool and funny. Yeah, I've brought this up a, a few times on this podcast, but like they always make things about it was a side gag where Homer's like shaking his keys out of the toaster. And he goes, oh, it's one way to stop drink driving. And I was like, you could just stop drinking, Homer's all. Yeah. <laughs> as Is if it I'm the drink do driving that. or the alcoholism? Either way, it's lose-lose, it's right? It's bad, but they always make Homer's drunk driving like... It's a funny joke. It's not. It's not good. It's not funny. Stop trying to make jokes out of it. It yeah. shits me. really shits me. There was a bit as well where Rita is reminiscing 
they cut back to Homer and Marge for like five seconds so that Homer can make a Charles Manson reference. And then yeah. they cut back into the thing. I'm like, that is so unnecessary. You could have just let that flow through. It wasn't like a break in the story. It was, you've said one thing. And it's like, oh, my dad was an aspiring songwriter just like Charles Manson. Back to the thing. Like, yeah. it wasn't needed. Yeah, yeah. we ran into yeah. this a couple of weeks ago when we reviewed an episode where Grandpa was telling the family about Homer's old dog, Bongo. And mm. they kept cutting back unnecessarily where we kind of notice in the flashback episodes that they did in the classic era, it'd be like they were in present day when they'd come back from a commercial break. So you're like, oh, we're watching The yeah. Simpsons. Yeah. And then they'd be like, oh, no, no, this is a flashback episode. Yeah. Rather than, yeah, cutting back pointlessly for a Charles Manson joke. Yeah. And my last note was, where's the reset to zero? Oh, Abe is Abe still is st- with Rita at the end. Yeah. And they're happy, seemingly. And in is all she of- in the <laughs> retirement castle now? And in all of the 400 and some episodes, a lot of them taking place after this one, we've never seen her again. No. Yeah. So what the fuck happened? <laughs> also, if she's was seemingly famous, shouldn't he be having some money, like songwriting money coming to him throughout time? Also, if she was famous, how come none of us have ever heard of her? <laughs> <laughs> it's time for my final notes. Now it's time, boys, well, now it's time for his final, final notes. notes. Elliot's final notes. <laughs> <laughs> I only have a couple. <laughs> Talking about bad cutaway jokes, Reverend Lovejoy playing poker is like, oh, mm. I'm looking at Bible trivia. That's a really good Lovejoy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Abe calling Rita sugar tomato. I, I don't know. It's quaint, wasn't it? Folksy. Uh, at one point, they kind of point out how it doesn't make sense, but Rita's like, life can't all be major chords. Sometimes you got to hit the minor keys. Yeah. That doesn't make musical sense, right? I really felt like that was just hamming some music shit in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know music. Say something folksy. Say something uh, musical. Yeah. <laughs> and there was also, they finished the episodes, like, there's all eight amazing shows on Sunday nights, none of them on Fox, <laughs> we're the Simpsons. Fuck this episode, it's time to rank this thing. On the Simpsons Index, we rank using our six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the you episode... You don't need to go any higher. <laughs> <laughs> <And> Just for... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Just go in ahead, case Ellie, there's ahead. no one who knows of our six-point scale, I shall let them know the other five <laughs> points. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there's also a participant if you thought the episode was just meh but for the positive rankings we might use some of those later there's okay bronze good silver excellent gold but for the best of the very best the essential episodes the ones that the simpsons could not exist without you give cubic zirconia i'm gonna go first let me show you how it's done uh look i am actually going to give this one a participant mostly because it just bored me more than angered me i see a lot of potential in this episode there's a couple of jokes like i don't know there's just not enough hatred built up for me for this one to kick it in the pit but what about you, Claire? Yeah, I'm failing it. Yay! It, yeah, you're absolutely right. It didn't actually make me feel angry in the way that other episodes that I've failed have made me feel in mm. burning mm. rage. But that's <laughs> almost worse. It's like the depths of depression where you just don't care anymore. You know, I'm watching this episode and I think, well, would I even move if the house fell on top of me? Like, it's a very emotional it's, response. It's just so soul numbing. Yeah. So what you're saying is the Simpsons have weaponized comedy. Yeah. Okay. Or the lack, <laughs> or the lack of yeah. more comedy. And how about you, Danny? I think I'm going to go with Participant because it had sort of a bunch of bones that I was interested in, a bunch of plot points that could have been great and it was all crap. I was watching it and seeing the episode that it could have been and I definitely wasn't angry. I was very disappointed. That's the worst. I know. (laughs) I'm like someone's mother. Well, that yeah, that's a Participant feeling to me, you know? when It doesn't do it for you and it doesn't doesn't do it. it, You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That I do. And Jordan finish us off. I agree. I think it's got a very participant brain feel. <laughs> so, yeah. We're all just so <laughs> numb. <laughs> yeah, it's broken, but it's not broken enough for me. I don't to know. Don't you remember really that you used angry? to be happy? Like, <laughs> yeah, but we used it to doesn't care take about things. much for me to get happy again. God, so. the four of us were dead silent the whole episode. Yeah, yeah. I think that it could be fixed. That's the thing. There are things that you could do to make it a bronze. But it just wasn't bad enough that I would write, I've written way more notes if it was a failure. Yeah, I get that, actually. All right, well, averaging out, this will be a dull participant. This will be the fourth episode from season 24 to be called a dull participant. Other such episodes are Penny Wise Guys. Mm. Oh, yeah. Didn't like that one at all. Yeah, Steve, Steve Carell. Carell. Yeah. Mobs account. Crockets. Crickets. Yeah. Crockets. Oh, yeah, and Lisa <laughs> breaks her vegetarianism to eat crickets. Yeah, very weird. Also, one that we reviewed the other week, Black Eyed Pleas, where Ned Flanders punches Homer square in the face. Um, Twice. Good. That, that might be satisfying to watch. Did it have a guest appearance from Will I Am? 
What? Black Eyed Please. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no. Okay. It had a guest appearance from Tina Fey and they wasted it. Oh, Aww. good. Aww. Uh, nice to know. And also Whiskey Business, the tale of Moe's new suit, which gets him a deal to make his own brand of whiskey called Maker's Mo. Boo. I think Maker's Mark should definitely sue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone should sue. Yeah. There should be a class action <laughs> lawsuit. <laughs> You've made our country sadder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And before we move on, is that reputation justified? Is that reputation justified? <laughs> Everyone's like getting into the theme songs yeah. like nervously. Yeah. <laughs> is that reputation <laughs> justified? <laughs> Robert David Sullivan of the AV Club. Oh, you can't trust people with three names. <laughs> hey! hey. <laughs> no, like they go by three names. Oh, hey. no, uh. the middle one's in quotation marks. It's yeah. Robert the David Sutherland. <laughs> yeah, hey, I've made that joke before. You know, Damn! <laughs> like Lee Harvey Oswald. He gave this episode a C plus. This is actually yeah, hey. pretty yeah. well where we went yeah. with it. Like, I like this guy. I like the cut of his jib. <laughs> and he says, in the end, Homer has a new appreciation for the sacrifices his father made for him, but he still pushes the reset button, and Abe ends up back in the nursing home. In all, another thin story with little satiric spark i want this guy to review more did he only do like a couple of satiric spark wasn't funny he's saying Mm. i like that oh hey guys yes what did you think um why when they find that abe is happy and he's moved out and can afford his own apartment and has a job why do they say no we need you to leave your job and your apartment and move back into the nursing home for what reason at all if now they don't even have to pay for him yeah, all they can still come good visit. questions to oh, be revisited at a later date. <laughs> we'll have to answer those questions another time. Now off to bed. <laughs> 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 all right, it's time to move on to the teens era where we're going to season 18, episode 5, G.I. Annoyed Grunt. Does anyone know this episode just from title alone? G.I. Doe. Homer joins the army. Oh, 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 it's the one where Bart declares war on Nelson and, like, Grandpa's like, you can lead a man to war, you can no. starve him, but you just can't slap him. We've already him. done that once, we know it's not that one. Oh, damn. We'll have to see when we be back. When we be back? We'll be back. When we be back! And we are back, and we just watched our Teens Era episode. This was Season 18, Episode 5, G.I. Annoyed Grunt. First released in November of Ort 6, it was directed by Nancy Cruz, written by Daniel Chung. In this episode, Homer joins the army, and a lot of shit happens. <laughs> hey, y'all, what was thoughts of this thing? <sighs> yeah. I'm more interested about whether Nancy Cruz spells it like Tom, Terry, or Penelope. K R U S E. On oh, neither. Wow, it's neither. Fourth Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it was not a horrible episode. It was a horrible episode. Really? Mm. Worse than the last one? Yeah. Wow. Mm. I really didn't like this one. Look, I think it was just very average. I mean, it did have a plot. I mean, it, did didn't, it, try, it didn't try to like cram too much in. In fact, you could argue that there wasn't enough here to work with. And I feel yeah. like they were just really struggling after the first maybe half of the episode the to drag it out. This? Well, look, I'll give them to it. They didn't try and fuck with Simpsons canon, which is, I think, a more heinous sin yeah, than just being kind of wacky. Well, yeah, speaking of Simpsons canon as well, I brought this one to you guys today because I don't know if you remember back a long time ago that we actually all reviewed Simpson Tide together. Yeah. The one where Homer joins the Navy. Mm-hmm. Which I-, I didn't really enjoy. Oh, man. Yeah. Is that the one where Stalin comes back to life? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is yet another one where my memory is of an episode that's much better than the one that, like... Yeah, I had this marked down in my spreadsheet as a bronze. Yeah. Not to editorialise too quickly, because we save the rankings for later. It's not a bronze. It's not a bronze. All right, let's hook into this fucking thing. Uh, This time, I guess we'll start with Claire. For better or worse, what is a moment from this episode that stands out to you? Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even know (laughs) where to begin. All right, I can tell you one thing that I really didn't like. The Christmas card gag Oof. for oh. uh the Abu Ghraib Cletus. one yeah. yeah not cool just yeah so they were doing a parody shitty. of the old fucking horrible thing with the people stacked on each other like a pyramid and the you know what it almost before they brought out the postcard and turned it into a joke 
it could have almost been a little one line dig at America, not, yeah. you know, like, like uh, Western culture isn't good to its prisoners either. And yeah. we always hear about, you know, how horrible the other guys were to our prisoners, but mm. it could have been like a little one line dig and I would have been fine with that. But they turned it into a, a joke point yeah. with a stupid fucking Christmas card of Cletus and his family doing like a fun little human pyramid with Cletus's wife slash sister slash mother yeah. goddess, whoever she is yeah but they all had the bags over their heads and everything and yeah it was very gross yeah everything that's, about that's it was that's really disgusting. punching down it's mm. punching way down which is not cool mm. and how about you jordan what stands out to you for better or worse i figure someone else is gonna say the wacky looney tunes bit so i'm gonna leave you that can say it if you yeah. want <laughs> okay that was such a break from the rest of the episode it was so bizarre to suddenly pull into that with the music cues, the tropes of like signs and and using sexy costumes and stuff. It was just strange. Look, and it started out as a slightly humorous joke of, you know, oh, look at that stupid big helicopter out there trying yeah. to find me. It's, like, it's not a big helicopter. It's a tiny helicopter. And it's not out there. It's in here. Like that I was fine with. That was like wacky, but, you know, mm. still funny. Oh, it's a yeah. drone, actually, not a helicopter. But far out, that Looney Tunes joke just dragged on. Yeah, they really. And it got, took five, six swings at it, didn't they? Yeah, because it just kept going. And then Homer, like, seducing it. And then, yeah. like, he's on the toilet yeah. or whatever. And... In the bath. Well, the sorry, bath. so sorry. In the bubbles. I, I hate yeah. to think how he made the beard <laughs> if he was on the toilet. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? The thing is, the Looney Tune tropes, there's nothing wrong with doing those jokes, but this was clearly mad padding. Like, it yeah. wasn't like oh, a yeah. funny throw to Looney Tunes cartoons, which, to be honest, I never enjoyed The Simpsons playing Looney Tunes jokes. Mm. I Not even the very they've... first one they did? The trampoline. No, sorry. I was thinking of the Roadrunner type thing. Where with, they do like the scientific name, like joke. the Latin names underneath uh, them. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. that yeah, that wasn't too bad. But it's a That's passing true. moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not a whole. It's a three it's not minute a whole gag. On it. If yeah. this were a cartoon, the cliff would break now. But that's also subverting the exactly. trope. This yeah. is just doing it. Like it's just doing it and doing it in a really weird way with this weird drone that kind of looks like a helicopter. That I don't. Just what the fuck is going on? And it yep. went on for, I felt like 15 minutes. I know yeah. it wasn't, <laughs> but it just felt like forever. Yeah. And how about you, Danny? What stands out to you for better or worse from this episode? Well, I was going to talk about the... <laughs> <laughs> no. Surprisingly enough, I think that I liked the part where they were subverting the angry drill sergeant bit. And he was like, normally I'd yell at you for a while about your sexuality and your clothes and your hometown and stuff. We're short on time, so we're going to cut back to you and you'll already have your hair cut and you'll be in your army uniform. And, they cu and oh, then yeah. it cuts back to him and he's got his hair cut in his army uniform. And for just like a split second, my brain was like, oh man, that must have really saved them time. They just stop the camera, get all the actors to have their haircuts, and then they start the camera again. And then I'm like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Terrible strain on the animator's wrists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done. On that as well, I think I heard you chuckle at a Homer going, are you going to ask us what our major malfunction is? It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's from it's, Full Metal Jacket. It's classic Drill Sergeant. Yeah. And I'm going to say what stands out to me is actually what feels like a very dropped plot point of the Drill Sergeant giving Homer unnecessarily favorable treatment. Where were they going with that? Yeah. You're going to stand here and eat donuts while they give 20 push-ups. And it's like... Is that the fact? Oh, I'm going to give you Atlantic salmon and a foot rub. Like, I was thinking, is this like a throwback to like, oh, well, you know, we're going to make the rest of the, your, you know, comrades. Comrades. Make them <laughs> work even harder so they hate you. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, that's, is there a movie where they do that? Like Not traditionally that know, but... in breaking down the recruits, they do try to turn them against each other rather than form strong bonds. Yeah, but I've never seen anyone be like brainwashy not punished and in fact rewarded for a yeah. mistake when everybody yeah. else is punished well that's what i liked about it i thought it was yes yeah, subverting a trope mm -hmm. going yeah. somewhere breaking down but they didn't do anything with it yeah, yeah, yeah. they get distracted by a shiny object yeah <laughs> they had to fit in that looney tunes gag oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they started with a looney tunes gag and built an episode around it so play count have you seen this one before today no i've not kent i think i have maybe once yeah i'm sure i haven't yeah, I've seen this before, and I remember yeah being a lot more favourable on it, although I knew it was very derivative of The Simpsons and also a bit of Family Guy. This felt like a fucking mm -hmm. Family Guy mm -hmm. episode yeah, to me, did, didn't it? which segues nicely into the wackiness. What were some wacky things about this episode that stood out? There was the Family Guy cutaway about Lisa and Peter. <gasps> yeah. Pardon me? <laughs> <Isn't> <laughs> it? I mean, in the style of Chef Aid, I'm going to say, Len is dead. 
Um, Lenny yeah. is super dead. He got squished by a tank yeah. in a car. Another drawn out gag mm. as well. Also, the the drawing of him was really like weirdly two D and and felt very, out of place. Very cartoony, very Looney Tunes as well. Uh, like when he was screaming, it felt like his head got bigger. Yeah, like it kind the car of you know was really flat, two D flat. While there was like a really well drawn tank rolling over it in almost mm. certainly mm. CG as well the wackiness of like broccoli day proclamation yeah. which i just wish they hadn't turned into a wacky gag could have just been a, like yeah. oh no don't worry we definitely have authorization to do this you know we can invade any american town and you know what i feel like they didn't know where they were going with that joke either because his mm-hmm. line was just mm-hmm. like oh yeah i saw you carrying that broccoli day proclamation around i wondered if you know we were maybe gonna get a day off or something like just improv sh- comedy Ugh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It felt like the first take when they hadn't got a script. But they've also done this, like tacking on a bill joke to another bill, like in the episode where Krusty's a, a senator or whatever, and they're trying to stop the planes flying over Springfield, or in the Bart's Comet episode, Aww. where they, I want to t- tack on to the evacuate town of Springfield bill, thirty million dollars of taxpayer money to support the perverted arts. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, these things have been done before in yeah. a lot more clever ways than fucking National Broccoli Day. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it's funnier when he's there tacking it onto the bill. By the way, I'd like to add to this bill. Yeah. $30 million for a porn. <laughs> yeah, whereas this wasn't, you know, looking outside and making fun of this. It was just pointing at it directly. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm, yeah. No, absolutely. Hey, could someone briefly explain the plot of this episode to me? Homer joins the army. I know that part. No, that's about it. He participates in war games. Yep. So he joins the army because they're so desperate for troops yep. that they'll take literally anyone at this point. But even despite that, he is still too dumb to actually go and fight for America. Okay. So what they so do is because him. he is so dumb, they're like, well, we'll put him in war games as the enemy so it's easy for us to win. Maybe. Why does that matter? Yeah, why, I don't know. Why yep. does that matter? Who yep. knows? Yeah, because it leads to wacky hijinks. Yes. Yeah. And- it's sort of disappointing because, like, him and Cletus, like, that could have been a funnier team up to me. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Well, the thing is, up until that point, I was actually with the episode. Yeah. I, I sort was of pretty, knew what was going on. I was pretty cool with it up until that point. And then, like, the colonel has, like, a million troops and tanks, and they go and take over the whole town just to try and catch these five idiots who run away See- instead of fighting them. This is where it gets fucked because you think like, oh, we're going to have war games to show how strong the army is and maybe win more recruits, right? Yeah. But it's not being broadcast to anyone. Nobody else outside of the army is actually watching or paying any attention to this. Yeah, I figure it was just for them to feel good. Yeah, fine. Like, yeah, but then, we like, win. Homer freaks out, runs into town, and like skips out on the army, even though he was actually like, "Oh, this is fine. Like, yep. I don't mind doing this." Yep. And for some reason, continues to hide. Then they're using live ammo to try and kill the yes, game they, players why? who why? have bubble guns. Who have bubble gums. Yeah. They're clearly game players. They're shooting at them with live guns. I feel like that was because they were so pissed at them. They were just like, fuck it. We'll just take the hit. But you know what? See, that would have been okay if they'd set it up to yeah, be like, we're going to televise sure. this so the army looks super cool. Yeah. But Letus and Homer somehow do all these wacky things to undercut the strength of the American army and you know show how yeah. bad they actually are. Then there'll be a reason for them to be, like, give a shit about them? Yeah, look, I thought it was just due to this colonel's fragile ego, but then he gets upstaged by these idiots, and it's just purely his ego, like, no, fuck it, I'm gonna do everything, I'm gonna fucking win this game. He even says in the episode, it costs us $50 million since lunch, like, you didn't tell me what to do, like, we're gonna fucking do this. I can see that as an episode, but I don't feel like I got that from his character. I don't think there was enough of that speech or enough of him getting... Yeah, yeah. there was a fair amount of extrapolation to be done there. Yeah, you have to sort of write that yourself. Yeah. And I don't know. It was just boring material that came out of it. It was just wacky hijinks. Yeah. And an episode which just felt so fucking cut to this, cut to this, cut to this, cut to this. Like, it was really disconnected. You know what? Even with the wackiest of hijinks, i.e. Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner, you still have to have clear purpose for the two yeah. main characters. Yeah. Coyote is hungry, needs to eat. Roadrunner He's is alive. smart. And alive and would like to stay that way and also likes to just fuck around with the coyote because he is so smart and arrogant. Clear. It makes sense. Whereas neither Homer running away from the army or this guy for some reason just not being able to go, fuck it, they were useless to Mm. us anyway, and walk away. Like, it didn't make any sense. This is also right after Homer chose to join the army. Yes. And why we went from like... 
trying to get the teens to the army, then trying to get Bart to promise to join the army later on. Then we forget about that later, and then Homer goes in and he gets them out of the army, and then he's like, I'm going to be in the army. Yeah, and he's getting the preferential treatment, and you think there's going to be something to that, but then they turn against him, and that whole aspect is dropped. And Yeah. And, like, to do the other fucking cutaway joke, just to make this even feel more like a Family Guy episode where they're like, we're going to round up every bald fat man in Springfield. What are they doing? And then they had Chalmers say something, and then they had Skinner in there. Why was Skinner Why was in Skinner there? there? Oh, because they said anyone who's ever laughed at Homer Simpson's jokes. You think Skinner no, has no, no, been? No, 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 like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, they said any bald fat man and anyone that's been abused by Homer. Abused? I no. thought he was yeah. amused. Yeah, amused. 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 amused by Homer's ah. antics. <laughs> if it was abused by Homer's antics, I think. Like everyone would be in there. Yeah. 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 What the hell is the point of that? Are they trying to catch Homer or are they just like corralling people up? Yeah. And it's just to have this wacky fucking skin of Chalmers aside and it's like pointless. Yeah. The whole town being under the army's thumb was pointless. Yeah. Yep. That's where it just went off the rails. Yeah. Because they basically just forgot why they were there in the first place. Yeah. The war I don't know games why became he not ran even away like... from the army in the first place. Real, Really. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why. I mean, he wasn't ha- going to have to fight. He wasn't going to have to do anything. He just had to go play some war games. I do not understand why they took this direction with this yeah. plot. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say about the wackiness, just jumping back to the Lisa Peter bit, that was such a long drawn out gag as well with oh Krusty. Oh like, God. Oh, I need to throw out my fucking 50 fox coat now for the baby seals now for the panda helmet now for the seal head gloves no, now the for the, it was head. the monkey head yeah. because they looked like mr teeny which was creepy and it's they weird. were so sad as well yeah. like, but god they just hung on those shots forever and uh, again completely pointless yep mm. yeah one other wacky thing was um cletus and homer and the other guys are definitely dead because cletus pulls that grenade i got married that up. by an avocado yeah they're all dead for sure. Oh, and even it was in that a training big... grenade. They were in a training camp. <laughs> yeah, it just explodes with confetti <laughs> and says, Happy birthday. <laughs> like the bubble guns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bubble guns and the birthday grades. But yeah, in that classroom as well, yeah, they went full R word in that as well with the guy that was just literally drooling and the dude picking his ear with a bat. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't know why bad Simpsons they wanted to do that. Very bad Simpsons. But how about the heart of this episode? <laughs> nah. Ultimately, though, like seriously, I don't know. The only only bit that came close that was immediately ruined was when Marge is like, Oh, I do anything to hear Homer's voice again. H means hot. Fuck off. Yeah. Like, it's his his own shower. shower. (laughs) And I got triple negative down arrows for me. There was when Bart's like, Hey, mom, I just joined the army. And mom drops the statue and she's like, Oh, no, how will I ever see my son again? That's a heart moment. Yeah, Yeah, sort of. I like that she's made a bust of Bart that says the Cowabunga, cowabunga dude. Boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's not, yeah, it was that the Cowabunga was... kid. Oh, oh, he should have right. been wearing a Cowabunga yeah, yeah. hat. <laughs> cowabunga? Uh, just I matter. like her. Yeah, you like there's bungle. so little to discuss with Heart, so I'm just yeah. going to plow nope. right ahead. Yep, keep going. Ultimately, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Not really. I mean, the characterization wasn't terrible for the first half. But it just really went off the rails, spent like a majority of the time doing Looney Tunes gags or other nonsense. Yeah. It was in parts, but I, overall it just had no purpose. I think it fundamentally didn't make sense. Like the plot doesn't make sense. It's not really coherent. Things happen. Mm-hmm. You look back on it and you're like, why, why did any of this happen? And that doesn't feel to the, like The Simpsons to me, you know? It's usually really cleverly written. Often. Sorry, not usually. <laughs> I was going to say, it's actually a much wackier episode than we've just even talked about. Because like, it's established there's a bunch of wacky relationships in Marge's phone tree where like Mr. Burns answers to oh, Nelson. Nelson and then Krusty answers to Ralph and like all this weird Tells stuff. Tells him to call Lindsay Nagel. Yeah, yeah, it's very weird. It was a lot of whack, which is, I guess, the hallmark of a teen's episode. Yeah. Is that it's just crazy, crazy, crazy all the time. And surely that takes half a season of people going, no, I don't like this before you change. But it's like they've had seven or eight seasons of just this. Yeah. Which isn't good. Feels like a fan written episode, but like by eight year olds who think like they're great at writing. Yeah. yeah, like Axe Cop or something, you know? <laughs> okay, now they're in the army. Okay, now they're running away from the army. Okay, now the tanks are going through the city. Okay, now they're shooting at them with real bullets. Okay, now he's going to like just forget about everyone else and leave them in the machine gun fire and run away. I don't know if there are any major character integrity breaks, but yeah, just the show as a whole is so off for me here. This Mm. is just, it's not The Simpsons I know and love. Ultimately, would you watch this one again? Maybe by accident, because I won't remember what happens (laughs) in it. Like, and like I said, the first half, 
is wacky teens to be fair but i have a relatively high tolerance for stupid wacky teens episodes i can deal with the gag after gag as long as there is some sort of overarching plot but they do just lose it after the army game starts so i probably start watching it and then go oh this one and then walk mm. away yeah I did not enjoy it very much. Wouldn't watch it again. I quite like army episodes for some reason. I'm not a big army guy, but like, uh, I don't know. There's something like really gritty about them, you know? Yeah. Preparing to head off to war, facing imminent possible death and blah, blah, blah. Like the old Skinner and Abe flashbacks are usually fun for in real? Simpsons yeah. and stuff. The but... Hellfish loved it. Yeah. Or even, is it Mrs. Click's husband or whatever with the... Oh, yeah. Holding, holding for grenade. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Danny, that guy's not so bad when you get to know him. <laughs> Boom. Or, or, or the Barb vs. Nelson Army one, or the one yeah. where like Lisa joins the army. Blah, 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 yeah. But I also like him to make sense. Yeah. How about you, Jordan? Would I, you I wouldn't watch it again. No. I, it frustrated me in parts, and then in parts bored me, which is kind of a weird combo. Yeah, it wasn't fun. No. So, no. Thank you. No, I kind of agree with you as well, Claire, where this one could be one that would fool me because I actually quite like the opening with Bart teasing the bullies at, while they're mm. at work and they mm. can't do anything about them. And then even, like, them hanging up Bart and Milhouse by spiderweb shoes. Yeah, like, yeah. that was thought, a pretty good, like, shop. Like, what do they call that? Sh window dressing? Is yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was pretty good. They could get a job in that. They're more creative than they give themselves credit for. But, yeah, once you see the army recruiters, it's like, oh, no, no, I know which yeah. one this one is. Skip, yeah. put on new disc, put yeah. on an earlier season. Why am I watching season 18? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it season eight. <laughs> I mean, I know season eight's kind of wacky, but, yeah. Mm. Hey, just to clarify, Dolph definitely measured his dick. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> no right. question. Okay, just checking. Oh, and, yeah, a bit of added continuity. Apparently, squeaky voice teen's last name, at least, is Friedman. Yeah. I'm sorry, oh. Mr. Friedman. I won't measure my dick again, Mr. Friedman. Yeah. <laughs> Word for word, quote from the show. Look it up. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I didn't like the constant gay jokes in this one either. Like, no. there was one about, like, the, oh, it's close to being gay, but they also had a joke at the don't ask, don't tell policies. The don't ask, don't tell one, which was, I know what you mean, and I feel like it has, it's just like one of those things that goes hand in hand with every sort of army or navy episode. Mm. There is going to be a gay joke or reference in there, yeah. and it's just a bit old. Yeah. It's a bit tired. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the bullies as well, where you can say, okay, it's not the show making a gay joke, it's the bullies, but it's not like, because they go, oh, that's gay. And they're like, oh, yeah, the army is kind of gay. And it's like, uh, that was disappointing. That yeah. wasn't really subverting the trope or anything like no. that, or saying these characters are not good for saying, like, it was yeah. just, it was bad. Oh, we're here. Cool. Claire, what would you change? Okay. <laughs> so I wouldn't mind the whole idea of them actually being really good at the war games yep. and having some sort of more high stakes to, you know, where mm. they're actually making the army look bad to the general populace and, like, people are laughing at the army and, you know, they're watching it like they're watching some sort of Hogan's Heroes-esque bullshit except where the Hogan's opposing non-American team is winning. And then you could understand the, like, rage. You know, I'm actually coming after you, Simpson. Like, I'm going to use real bullets this time. And then he actually has to run and hide. Yeah. And then the town comes to save them. Option number two. They're playing these war games out in the forest and whatever. And then they get caught up in a real oh, yeah. war yeah. or Ooh. conflict of some sort. And they've only got these bubble guns and Interesting. these confetti Ooh, red, tropic grenades. Style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I was going to say like Red Dawn. Like there's suddenly an invasion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but because they're not dressed as American soldiers, they're dressed as other soldiers, end up on the other side and have to bring them down from within with the skills that they've learnt through their army training. Yeah. Interesting. How about you, Jordan? What would you like to change? I was thinking when the drone was getting piloted around, yes. I actually wrote down, oh, Bart is going to be piloting this drone, isn't he? But he wasn't. But I thought, <laughs> okay, well, what if you did that? What if you like Bart is pre-engaged to the army? And so he starts doing like some training with them and stuff. And then it kind of oh, becomes yeah. a Bart versus Homer you know, personal I struggle. Like it. And yeah, where it's kind of like Bart going, no, 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 I'm going to show what I'm made of and Homer trying desperately like to just Andrew's kind of... game thing going yeah, on. Or, yeah, but I thought maybe you could do something with that where like Bart wanting to join and pre-enlisting, but then that is never mentioned ever again. Mm. But like maybe they could have done something like that. Still wouldn't make it a good episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I'm not a writer. But maybe that would have improved it somewhat, at least. Well, I do feel like the whole plot of them... Teens are too smart and savvy to join the army now. We have to aim younger. Yeah. And they put a lot of effort into 
making these kids sign what is clearly legally non-binding contracts. Oh, that's promising. So so the yeah. army in like Absence ten years' rings. time. Yeah, because they're all eight they're years all minors. old. Yeah, exactly. I think but that would have like... been a fun angle to like lean into the whole abstinence promise ring thing. <laughs> well, they could have had the kids like you know you're too young to legally join the army, but we can put you in like kids army and start training you from a young yeah. age like yeah, a brainwashing yeah. situation you were in cadets weren't you yeah exactly really? i don't know what it's like yeah oh wow air force cadets wow so yes sir <laughs> and how about you danny what would you like to change for one thing i don't like that they they moved from the teens down to the kids and then they mm. dropped the kids i didn't like that very much so i thought you need to keep that thread running so like when homer goes back to get his contract torn up they're like oh sorry that contract's already been shipped off to afghanistan blah, blah 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 and so he ends up like getting in there to try and get bart out of the army i'd also really like it to see uh homer's really incompetent and the army keeps doing these things to try and get him out while he's also trying to escape but they sort of like counter each other like when bart's dad i would love you to come on this thing well bart i would be delighted you know, you know where they're both opposites are sort of stopping each yeah, other yeah. from getting rid of when they both clearly want Homer to go home. Yeah. And I feel like it'd be funnier if it didn't go into into Springfield, not necessarily into like Afghanistan or or you know, foreign soil, but I think taking mm. it back to the hometown really like stretches my disbelief a little bit. Yeah. So it should be out in like Area 51, you know, in Nevada or something, out in the middle of a compound. He has to do like a sneak in raid or something. Or yes, all the guards can obviously see his shitty sneaking in, but they've all been told to let him get through so they can catch and get him kicked out. And he's like, I've got to sneak in so I can bust the thing. And so he's like on his fat tummy trying to sneak through the thing. And the guards are just like, oh my God, he's so obvious, but they have to pretend not to see him while he sneaks through. He's dummy thick and the clap of his ass <laughs> cheeks <laughs> is the guards. Hey. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> With special guest star. Oh, fuck. What's his name? David Hayter. David Hayter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I didn't mention the guest stars of this episode. Oh, yeah. Keith Sutherland was playing. Ironic. Oh. Yeah. What? He's the guy that replaced David Hayter. Oh, that's right. Interesting. And Maurice LaMarche as well was playing another colonel. Okay. From Futurama, he plays Horrible Gelatinous Blob and Morbo and Lure of the Planet Omicron Percy I8. And the Jamaican guy, I think. No, that's Phil Lamar. Oh, yeah. Well, they both have the same last name. Just ignore it, Elliot. I will. <laughs> and as for what I'd change, look, okay, let's just say Homer does get into the army via X reason, whatever. I really like the idea that the colonel was buttering him up, but why is he buttering him up? So it should be that Homer, like, was getting put in the war games, but he actually doesn't know. Like, this guy is so stupid, he wouldn't figure it out, so he's actually going to try and, like, oppose us in the war games, even though, you know, we're going to nerf him. We're going to give him nerf rifles and stuff. Like, the ho- fact that Homer's cluey so to the war games... they were bribing him. Mm. Yeah. They were buttering Ooh. him up to, like, just make him feel like it's going to be a good experience and this is the army and they're like, okay, we need, like, an enemy that's unwitting that we're opposing mm. them. And also to give some more weight to when Homer goes into hiding and he goes into the retirement castle because that was just her grandpa's going on about all the bad things there and it wasn't anything so i actually want to see more of the episode homer in hiding at the retirement castle and then abe finding out because he has been in the army military training so yeah yeah, he's got a service to his country he dobs homer in or tells him the value of our military service god bless america military training to help him escape anyway yeah either way oh 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 you know what could be cool is if they're buttering Homer up to be the baddie in the war games and things, and he thinks he's being the baddie terrorist war game simulation, but actually they're using him to do terror like 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 the mandarin in iron man <laughs> he's like right. he thinks he's an actor but outside he's actually like cause yeah, i don't know yeah mandarin let's, let's mandarin this <laughs> i or, like mandarin or they're buttering him up to be like the frontline person oh, like God. the modern day drummer boy oh shit you know <laughs> all right we're here claire do you have any other notes I don't know if we spoke about this already, but you know when he gets his fingers trapped. Oh yeah, that, like, the, that was a mad cringe moment. It wasn't as body horror as some yeah. things. He's gonna have get been, those but... shit chopped off, bro. Oh, that was bad. Yeah. Oh, I saw that the can I come to lady is called Dorothy oh. apparently. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, Dorothy. She was Dorothy's she was there. Granddaughter comes around with all yeah. kinds of soups. Oh, yeah. That was like oh, it's her. <laughs> comes around with all kinds of soups. I hope that one day my granddaughter brings me soup. I love soup. Yeah, <laughs> soup's great. All kinds of soups. 
Homer being like, don't worry, Marge, you know, we'll be in power, you know, in the next 10 years or whatever. Yeah. Like, We're China, right? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. ha. Mm-hmm. 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 Take I'm that American dumb. confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sign gag, tatters, clothes for orphans. Oh, yeah. Right at the beginning. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That was tatters. a mediocre sign gag, but not horrible. There you yeah. go. That's my notes. Any other notes, Danny? I quite like the one after... Dorothy's granddaughter bringing around a bunch of an array of soups, a range mm. of soups. I like that Gary's grandson brings his banjo and works all of our names into the songs. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking corny, That's but it's also though. so retirement homey. I'm actually glad to see that somebody visits this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Homer never works their names into the songs. <laughs> oh, the 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 bubbles when he was like, "Now fly, my pretties, and coat them with your shiny rainbow films." I felt that was like a nod back to the prisoner thing, but I sort of would have liked to see more with the bubble guns. I don't know why. <laughs> maybe it would have been overdone somehow. But maybe he could have like, I don't know, done something with Get the him bubbles. In their eye you know? And it's like, ah, yeah, stings. Yeah, oh, yeah, or yeah, like use it to make slippery <laughs> floors. Uh, accidentally or... winning. Yeah. Of there. yeah. See, that ties in with my theme as well. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> mm. And how about you, Jordan? Any other notes? Yeah, there were a couple of things that in their whole, for each section of the recruitment thing, the lines that they used that I kind of liked. One was that like, due to exciting recent events, we need more like recruits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Later on when they're like, hey, you tired of waiting for sanctions to work? I know I am. <laughs> so yeah. I actually did kind of like the scene at the Springfield Elementary School <laughs> Assembly with the yeah, whole- the recruitment like, video? Yeah, all yeah. the various video game and uh, action characters in the yeah, thing. And Yeah, I liked even before when they were just like, do you you know any cool kids we can show a video to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Michigan! <laughs> yeah. No, here! <laughs> All right, play the video. Not bad. And the third one was like, you can be part of America's next unresolvable conflict. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. What was the bit about like, you know what's even cooler than rap and crunk and dope jams? Uh, join the military. Yeah. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't he get dishonorably discharged from the Navy? Yes. yes. So he shouldn't be able to join the army. They're right? desperate. <laughs> yeah, they are desperate. They're they rewriting a lot of rules. Early, okay, yeah. fair enough. The Mo's Eyes bit I really got frustrated by. Like, oh, now oh, I'm thinking about a ping pong yes. match. Now I'm thinking about a really fast game of chess. Now, and it's like, now Mo's I'm thinking about a better sh- Simpsons episode. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Mo's voice isn't good anymore. No. You know what? Their whole plan was so shit like i would change that too it's like the plan like yeah let's just put a bunch of alcohol in the reservoir and then oh they're gonna God. drink the water from the tap and get drunk like what the fuck what kind of stupid plan is this are we still in the looney tunes section Seriously. of this episode it won't work of yeah. course it won't work also it'll smell oh no also the whole town will get drunk it's homeopathy because you know you dilute it enough it gets stronger bam i'm convinced okay this was definitely another part of the episode that felt just like completely insane to me and made yeah. no sense at all yeah yeah very but dumb. you're right as well it gets the whole town drunk mm. yeah. yeah because they're just drinking the water from the tap that is definitely not passed through any filtration system oh yeah also, people would die they would the, be poisoned they're yeah. like the 50th person right to go fill their water bottle for the day looking at all their drunk ass <laughs> mates <laughs> vomiting and getting dizzy and hallucinating and god knows what else they're supposed to be doing wouldn't you go Maybe the drinking water is insane. Maybe there's here. a problem. Maybe I'll stick to bottled until we work out what's happening. As no, if no one in the army has it. ever gotten drunk before. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, suddenly the taps all smell like a combination of beer and wine and scotch and bourbon. Yeah. Disgusting, right? And the worst right. king's pot ever. Um, Homer just has that sexy dress and fishnets. And helicopter costume. He, that too. I mean, I'll forgive that, but uh, he's... I mean, he's just funny rules. No, that doesn't count. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, like, yeah, but then he also has a room full of TNT and dynamite and explosives and, and stuff. And it just but blows and rattles the door and the house doesn't... It do- yeah, yeah. In that mm-hmm. coat rack room or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Bugs Bunny rules. Oh, and they actually do it. That's all folks as well. Oh. I know. Yeah. Is I that know. egregious? That's the blue screen of the drone. That someone's patched that in as like a funny joke, but it just oh, happened right. to be involved in a Looney Tunes <laughs> no. thing. Nope, 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 nope. Um, this, this is just dumb. This is dumb. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say it. I'm going to anyway. Uh, the, <laughs> the couch gag. I like that they re- were able to reuse the moving floor from the Jamiroquai Virtual Insanity video clip. <laughs> and lastly, the credits. It was just another your cut joke. Yeah. It's the exact same as the fucking Bart Star episode. It and was, that it was yeah. only repetitive. funny then. Yeah. And it's never been funny since. Uh, he said frontline infantry to everybody except himself. He said Coast Guard. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, my final note. Uh, now it's time. Now it's time. Skinner. It was like. Put some heart into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> final notes. Now he's going to read them out. He'll read final notes. <laughs> Carry on. Principal Skinner, I did kind of like the exchange. Glad to see you recruiting people into the army. And he's like, well, we could still recruit you. And he's like, how about you bite me? I kind yep. of like yeah, that. Yeah, that was good. He knows the horror of war. Yeah. yeah. The parade magazine bit, another fucking drawn out joke that can go absolutely fuck itself. Yes. Yep. Oh, another thing that I would have changed as well. I would have amped up Renya Wolfcastle's role in this episode. Yeah. yeah. He was recruited. Yeah. There's something to that. Oh, man. They could have gone to hold Tropic Thunder with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, imagine that. Homer, Cletus, and Renya doing that whole fucking thing. Well, they could have done a Captain America ripoff, which is, you know, like Captain America had to do all those yeah. propaganda films for yeah. the yeah. army. Yeah. But it's Renya yes. Wolfcastle, you know, nice. taking a different direction, well, I think guys. that's what he was trying to do. But he got recruited yeah, yeah. anyway. <laughs> and my final note is, yeah, Marge, uh, one act break, points out, Homer, this is the craziest thing you've ever done, even going into space, being a clown, or being in the Navy, just pointing out how fucking rehashed this goddamn thing yeah. is. Mm -hmm. It's time to rate this thing. Claire, what you got to say? Mm -hmm. oh, look, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm pretty confident other people will fail it. <laughs> so I'm like... What gave like, you that idea? <laughs> my goal here is for like a shiny failure because I do <laughs> feel, so I'm going participant, sorry. But look, I do feel that the first half was enjoyable enough if they just fucking fixed the second half. I mean, I still wouldn't have loved this episode, but it would have been all right. So I think there was a little bit more than just bones here. There was a little bit of meat, but this carcass was still lacking fur and a personality. So definitely <laughs> <laughs> no heartbeat <laughs> detected. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, even though I, <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? can we just cut all that <laughs> no I, I got that metaphor I was it with has you. veins but no arteries weirdly <laughs> I want to go home <laughs> oh, I am home uh, how about you Danny well I actually planned as soon as our review of the previous episode concluded concluded I walked away thinking, ah, oh, shoot. As soon as I come back, I'm going to have to change that previous issue to a failure. As soon as I said participant, I was like, no, it's such a failure. It's going to hate me for changing the rules. But then I got to the end of this episode and I'm like, whoa, no, this is a failure. Ho, 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 ho. You still can. You know, we allow for a change of rank within the same episode or you have to call up Jordan at 3 a.m. in yeah. the morning. Oh, That's I true. <laughs> I understand that. But having seen this episode, I feel nicer to the previous one, which I did not like. But this one, oh boy, mm. this is just insane. This makes no sense at all. Mm. No sense at all. I dislike it and I will fail it. And how about you, Jordan? Yeah, I'm still at a participant after talking shit about it. But there were a couple of things I liked, which is more than... Look, if there had been... One thing I liked, it would have been more than the last episode, which was very bland. This at least had some things that I kind of liked, some things I really didn't like. But I'm thinking about the era it's from, like the teens, and I'm like, yeah, this is symptomatic of the seasons around this. And so it's, it's a different participant from the last one. Yeah, I'm going to give it a participant, which, sorry, fucks up your shiny failure uh, desire. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm heading. Well, we've sort of hit on this concept that participant is actually a very wide net. We've yeah. actually got more episodes that are like within the participant range than any other range. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going failure with this one mm. as well. So mm. it, it was one off the shiny mm. failure ranking. It's going to be a dull participant because we average up because we're nice. But sort of having this one and the last one as two episodes to compare was actually really interesting for me where that one sort of felt me feeling really flat and I very could have easily failed it, but I was just like, I don't hate it enough. But this mm. one, like maybe there were some jokes that I liked more in here, but... I was just actively against this episode by the end of it. And I just, it just made me filled with hate, which is not what the other episode <laughs> did. There was a lot that the episode did that I didn't like, but the hatred was strong in this one. But averaging out, yes, like I said, this will be a dull participant, much like the last one. This will be the fourth episode from season 18 to be given that ranking. It'll be joining the boys of Bummer. Uh, you remember that one? Bart misses the, the catch and then everyone's a dick to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Bart like tries to kill himself. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. It uh, is a bit of a bummer, that episode. Yokel Chords, where they do like a Sound of Music <laughs> parody, but with <laughs> Cletus's kids. I love the pun. It's great. Yokel Chords? Yeah. <laughs> And the other episode we'll be joining is Mo and Alisa. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that was like the most lackadaisical version of uh, Money Money. <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's the poetry one, right? Where Mo becomes the poet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck, I hated that episode. Yeah. Oh, so bad. <laughs> <gasps> All right. You've earned it. We're here. But unfortunately, it's not a, the classic of classicists. We're doing a clip show, y'all. It's Yay. a good clip show, at least. That's okay. Yeah. At least we got a lot of Phil Harmon in this, right? That's so right. I'm cool with it. At least 33% new footage. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's do it. We're doing the Simpsons 138th episode spectacular. We're, we're, we're back. Woo! Spectacular. Ooh. And we are back, and we just watched our classic and final episode for the evening. This was Season 7, Episode 10, The Simpsons 138th Episode Spectacular! <laughs> yeah! Now, the director and writer didn't actually want to take credit for this one because it's kind of a clip show, but... Yeah. So they're credited as director was pound foolish, writer was penny wise. <laughs> which was actually David Silverman and John Vitti, respectively. In uh-huh. this episode, you should know this one. This is the 138th episode spectacular. There's deleted scenes, there's clips, there's bits from the Tracy Ullman show. Hey, everybody. What did we think? This is actually like one of my favorite clip shows. Mm. Yeah, I quite enjoyed this one. I forgot which one it was when we just said mm. 138, mm. and I was just going, I was caught up on going, why 138? Like, yeah. why? <laughs> why are they doing this? I guess they just have to fit exactly a clip show why. in. That's exactly why. Yeah, it's so fun that it's just such an arbitrary number as well. Yeah. I thought they were doing that on purpose for yeah. like other shows doing their 200th episode spectacular or whatever. And they're like, this is all pointless and stupid. So we're going to do 138th yeah. to poke I, fun yeah. of that. I also like the whole vibe of them like clutching at straws. Like this, every episode might be our last. And that's yeah. like mm. the whole Troy McClure vibe as well. Yeah. Yeah. All those jabs at like Matt Groening looking like... Uh, Ex Nazi with the <laughs> yeah. eye patch. And... <laughs> no, I think they put a really good, fun spin on this. And Shag, we reviewed the So It's Come to This clip show where it was a third of a really good episode and then it was a boring clip show after that. <laughs> this one, you know, they worked in the clips and sort of wove something fun out of this, I reckon. Yeah. I think a lot of it is credit to Phil Hartman. Like, oh, yeah. For mm. Troy McClure, like He's being the, just so like, charming. <laughs> Like, Troy McClure is the washed-up actor trope, yeah. but even he is like, oh, God, I'm so bored doing this. And, like, <laughs> you know, at times he's, like, falling asleep on the couch. And or he's like, the stick coming yeah. in, poking him awake, <laughs> and he, he wakes up straight away going, wow, if that's the stuff they cut, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't imagine how good the stuff they kept in was. Yeah. Like, he's on the money. Yeah, he's good. What they live in must be pure gold. And then, like, he's off stage, like, smoking and stuff. And I think it's, yeah, it's down to the little, even the non-verbal parts of... Oh, it's just great. the Troy McClure character. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really good. I really like the way they turned the Simpsons house into a set. Yeah. It's such a small thing that you don't really think about it. At first, I just go, hey, look, now you can see the edges of the set. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But it's great because you can see just like just a bit of the back where room where the there's just enough that you can see the camera angle and the stairs. And the and, applause light. And the applause yeah. lights. Ah, it's great. <laughs> and how about you, Claire? What stands out to you? Actually, this leads into my question to you, Elliot. Ooh. So when I was little and I first watched this and it had all like the early Simpsons clips, you know, of like yeah. putting all the kids to bed and the kids wake up, you know, obviously freaked out and have to get into bed with their parents and everything. Were those actual early Simpsons clips or were they yeah. brought for the show? Okay, thank you. Yeah, these were all from the Tracy Ullman show. The first one that they showed in the episode was actually the first one that was on the Tracy Ullman show. But has changed a lot yeah <laughs> like that whole question i was like this is a setup right where byron's like dad what is mind <laughs> like, what no mm. yeah i liked how like the bart and lisa characteristics kind of switched over yeah because yeah. yeah. bart would be the one that'd be like what what bed bugs mm. oh definitely yeah. whereas lisa would be the one that was like wondering if yeah the mind yeah. is something tangible that, yeah or just a or is it random, random impulses yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love when they're freaking out as well and you can hear bart go ah, please be more specific <laughs> 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 so yeah this was actually yeah the first simpsons short to wear on the Tracy wow. Ullman show. They aired from 1987 to 1989. So I've wow. been trying to figure out the best way that we can do that because I think it would be good if we can do them on the index. I'd, yeah. 
I do have them. I've watched most of them. They're much like in the same vein as this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would love to see them because like when I was young, I wasn't sure because like obviously with the Troy McClure part, you know, him watching these and not being amused at all. Just be like, wow, yeah. this is garbage. Like I wasn't sure if it was drawn just for yeah. this clip show. Yeah. Is like these are the fake well, early Simpsons. There are some bits in this where I'm like, I can't remember the actual episode where they're like, oh, this was an alternate or this was a deleted scene. I'm like, wait, have I only seen this in this show? I swear <laughs> this bit was in the actual episode or am I just remembering this episode? I don't mm. know. Yeah. It Very, was really weird. Like Ma- the Bart bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very Mandela Bears effect right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> just on the Bart Bath one as well. Bart Bath. Um, <laughs> that actually looked better than a lot of season one episodes, I thought. Mm. Yeah. They yeah. obviously like put a lot of effort into that scene because it was a funny scene. Yeah. yeah. The only thing that strikes me as weird about that is after Homer throws him into the bath, mm. he does all these like weird body movements where he's like, see boy, that's okay, you know? Yeah. But like his body is like... Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> well, even you see in their actions, they are like very animated for yeah. lack of a better word. Yeah. And, you know, this is one of the big problems with season one is that like they had to scrap and redo a couple of episodes because like this was a new animation medium, the adult orientated sitcom and especially the episode with the babysitter bandit, the first mm. pass at that yeah, came back yeah. and the characters had a, like a rubbery Disney-ness to them and mm. they wanted to avoid doing that. But you still see it in these shorts. Yeah, yeah. Play count. How many times before tonight have we seen this episode? God, I'd say a dozen or two. Bajillion. Yeah, I've seen this one many, many and sundry. At least 138 times. Damn, hey, she's good. She wins. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember pouring over this one as a kid and I think it really comes back to what I loved about DVDs and why I was such a big DVD collector. This was like having bonus features before bonus features were a thing. Yep. So the question is sort of a bit weird for this one. So wackiness? like Captain (laughs) Wacky later renamed as Homer. You've got to mention that. (laughs) Isn't that foreboding? Like, (laughs) Yeah. No, totally. Well, I mean, just finishing off, like we were talking about the Tracy Ullman shorts before. Did anyone else have anything to say about them? I mean, look, you can tell that the style was very different which is weird right because his life in hell style is pretty similar because it's a very similar style so for him to like the early simpsons everything was very jagged and it's strange to watch now because you're like oh those character designs are terrible (laughs) but you know they've obviously been rounded into what we know now well i mean i don't know how true this is but there is like the rumor that you know matt was originally going in to pitch a life in hell series to james l brooks and then sort of changed course at last second and quickly doodled these versions of The Simpsons that then ended up being on the Tracy Ullman show and he was like, oh, I wish I had a chance to clean them up because they kind of used his original scraggy designs. (laughs) What's that thing that Troy says at the end? A bunch of half ass like... (laughs) human characters roughly drawn from his rabbit yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to pay off his gambling debts yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's probably some truth to it because isn't it like the characters are named after his mum and dad and oh yeah sister all, and stuff like yeah all the family members are named yeah. after his family members except bart Who's which is brat. just an anagram of brat yeah. <laughs> yeah so that lends credence to the fact that it was just like some half-assed little scribble quickly before yeah like i mean he, yeah <laughs> i don't think he can easily deny that mm. Yeah, anything else to say about the shorts? With the shorts, was the Tracy Ullman show, it was like a, a variety hour kind of style program? Because I was trying to figure out, like, yeah. how would they fit into the show? They'd be like, it was like a now sketch show. They just, were, like, the just the way the itchy yeah. and scratchy works yeah. for Crossy the Clown, so, but yeah. for adults. They were mostly bumpers for commercials, you know. Um, okay. So if you think about, like, the Space Patrol one, Going to a commercial, the end of that would have been when the pot got stuck on his yeah, head. Okay. Mm. But coming back from the commercial would be when they crack it out. Yeah, gotcha. But yeah, we get yeah classic Walter Matthau style Homer. Yeah, definitely. In the fallout shelter, the bombs are dropping and all that. Yeah. Mm. But we did notice a couple of good sign gag jokes in the bomb shelter as well. Where yeah, had a can of canned wings, was it? Can of chicken wings. Yeah. And a can of stuff. <laughs> stuff. Just stuff. I'll date the stuff, I think. I don't trust canned chicken wings. <laughs> well, canned stuff, though, they really make that to last. Yeah. You've seen that gif of the canned chicken getting you poured out. Right? Yeah. Beyonce. You have a mixed gif. That's a great gif. Uh, I'm nauseated <laughs> thinking about it. Keep moving. And I like how they made reference to the crude drawings as well. You know, all the characters were there. Itchy and scratchy. Grandpa and crusty. And yeah. <laughs> Just the shitty MS paint fucking. Yeah. Oh, so worse Someone's child drew those. Some three-year-old. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it was so funny. 
so the second segment is where like they are pulling clips from the show and I like how they're framing this bit as viewer mail. Yes. Yeah. But especially the first one. That's not a question, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so, did you notice the one common theme with the three people that wrote they were in? All professionals. <laughs> yeah, professional high end. <laughs> yeah, a professor, a doctor, and an ambassador. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doctor's handwriting was shit. I never picked up on that. That uh. was a really good joke. <laughs> uh, so in this one, yeah, we get the homeowner is stupider every year. Yeah. It wasn't technically things about him being stupid. I think it was just an excuse to be like, here's Homer's greatest hits from each of the seasons. Because a bit like the Treehouse episode, the Shining version, it's not him getting stupid, it's him going crazy. This also, always- that totally legitimized yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. like- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that one always pissed me off as a kid because, yeah, it's not him getting stupider. It's it's out of a treehouse of horror. And season six had plenty of moments that they could have pulled from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To me, what this more demonstrated was like how the show escalated from the seasons. Yeah. Because mm. also the, the other one where um it's the Flaming Moe's episode where he's like upset that Moe's getting all the credit and mm. he's being really sarcastic. Like, again, he's not being stupid in that either. He's just angry and sarcastic. Yeah. Um, I suppose the stupid part would be him having to point out <laughs> that he was being sarcastic yeah. despite it being well, so duh. obvious. Duh. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, I, I love that Sassy is Marge. the only yeah. time I've ever heard say, her say anything sarcastic. <laughs> well, <Yeah>. duh. <laughs> Who else had a playground of people seeing Simpson, Homer Simpson? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's the greatest guy in history. <laughs> like, I know those lyrics better than the Flintstones Right? Ones. <laughs> yeah. About to hit a chestnut tree was definitely a thing that would go through your mind. Yep, it's constantly. S- yep. such a good Simpsons joke. It's something absolutely stupid that came out of... Nowhere that fucking uh, was perfect, pitch goddamn perfect. And the fucking where he goes, he jumps into his car through the window as well. <laughs> that always yeah. gets me. Yeah. <laughs> See, like even yeah, between that, the flaming rose thing and that, like what an escalation of a yeah, show. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, where do they go from there? Space. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of stupid. That was pretty dumb. Well, I Watch mean, out, they're ruffled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love in that moment they had another shot of Matt Graming as well, and he was doing like lip sip suck at his desk. Oh, oh yeah, yes. <laughs> it's like how do you do an episode every week? Like, what Matt Get meant out of to my say? Office. Yeah, <laughs> according to, to his lawyers. lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love actually, yeah, the characterizations of him and then uh, Sam Simon and James Earl Brooks. Yeah, Sam Simon with the big like beard and the big fingernails at the typewriter in mm. bed. I love that. Hugh Hefner. Hugh. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes, yeah. thank you. Apparently, their original joke was because Sam had left the show by this point, and their original joke was just to be photo not found, and they gave it to him for approval, and he said, oh, I don't like it, and drew them that, and they were like, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's oh, perfect. Oh, that's cute. That's good. And then James L. Brooks being just, just like <laughs> rich. Mr. <laughs> Moneybag <laughs> from Monopoly, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, here's where we get, like, the Smithers has got a boner for Mr. Bones segment. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. This was so funny as a kid, though. Mm. You're like, oh, I'm putting all the pieces together now. I get it. But then it's like... Those scenes are great. Come I, on. Yeah. I love how they put them all together and then completely undercut it with, a, as you can see, the deal of Mr. Smithers is that... <laughs> he's Mr. He's, Burns' assistant. Yeah. He's about 40 years old. <laughs> yeah. And he resides in Springfield. Yeah. <laughs> he's unmarried. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is the deal with Smithers. You know what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. What's your favorite Smithers clip? Ooh, the dream. Yes. Smithers, you ever have one of those dreams where they fly in through the window while you're lying in bed? Speaking of which, has anyone else ever had a dream like that? No. 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 I think it's a a TV trope. Yeah. It's a TV dream. Mm. Like a 90s TV dream, I suppose. It's like a Passions, Days of Our Lives Mm. sort of dream. Because, yeah, they had the Vaseline over the lens and everything. Mm. <laughs> they didn't Soft need focus. to do that. They could just yeah, like, draw it, yeah. <laughs> or just spread Vaseline on the paper. Yeah, exactly on the cell. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, this scene uh, got in a lot of trouble with the censors because they thought Smithers had a boner in bed. But you can see it's just his knee. Yeah, yeah. That's what he wants you to think. It's a raging boner. <laughs> He's got wow. a big knee on. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> Yeah, I liked the detail. Someone pointed it out that he's apparently a pretty good programmer. Like mm, he made yeah. that Mr. Burns intro with just like a Windows ninety three computer or something. Yeah, like or Windows three point one even maybe. Or DOS. Maybe it was Would have DOS. Been DOS. He just did the ASCII like art. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he's got a lot of time on his hands for someone that's Mr. Mm. Burns' assistant. 
Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Just get we know how off. hard they get worked. <laughs> what was the one? Smithers, what would you do if I ran up and started humping your leg? No, no, no. <laughs> Sniffing at your crotch and slobbering over your face. face. <laughs> if you did, you did it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love how like the progression of that, though, is really good as well, because it starts off with the more subtle things. Subtle. Yeah. And then, like, Happy birthday, Mr. Smithers. Smithers. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fun collection of things. <laughs> <laughs> So I liked as well in these two ad breaks how they framed it with the trivia. Yes, both very good. Yeah, both of them being jokes in the end. Yeah, of, mm. yeah the NRA yeah. forever. Oh, that was great. <laughs> yeah, that's just one of hundreds of radical right-wing messages that yeah. are crammed into the show every week. I did week. not get this as a kid. <laughs> Neither. Yeah, apparently, like, even back then, they were getting people saying, oh, this show's too left-leaning. And yeah. Mm. So, yeah, this was, like, a bit of a dig at that. Well, I was about to say, yeah, they do that with Matt Groening before. Where it's like He was known for things like... Johnny Reb yeah. and like <laughs> yeah. all the damnation. Of, yeah. <laughs> all of those like really right wing sounding cartoons or whatever they were. Definitely conservative. Yeah. Old style comic books. It was comic comics, book covers. Yeah. Perhaps yeah. a little bit the one that we don't like the flag of. The Southern Army, the Confederate. The, the Confederate. Yeah. It seemed very Confederate. Yeah. Mm. Oh, for Johnny real. Reb. <laughs> <laughs> What's Reb? So Reb. Rebel. Oh, right. Like the Rebel flag. And the cool misdirect where they, yeah, even dropped in, yeah. Bleeding Gums Murphy and Dr. Marvin Monroe had both yep. died. If you picked Marvin Monroe and Bleeding Gums Murphy, you were wrong. <laughs> they were never popular. So what is the right answer? <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know. We can't tell you. Well, you don't know. Hey, how did Marvin Monroe die? Well, see, this is the weird thing with this bit because they're counting his death because at one episode, I don't remember which one it was, they had outside the Dr. Marvin Munro Memorial Hospital or clinic or something. Mm. And so it was just an implied death. But then later on, they just brought him back and said, oh, I weird. thought you were dead. No, I wasn't dead. And it was a bad joke and I don't remember it because it wasn't good. Mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, they were clever for him, especially because it's like, it is kind of trivia. Yeah. The actual cash register just throws up gibberish, doesn't it? When, no, there's yeah. numbers. It's 382.4 something. It's like... It's, $382. Fuck. How do they afford that? According to a few more facts about The Simpsons, Maggie originally scanned for $847.63, which is the price of raising a baby for one month back in 1989 wow. when oh, the show cool. debuted. Now things were changed and Marge's groceries add up to $243.36. And so when Maggie is added and scanned, she doubles the tab to $486.52. Mm. Wow. Oh, I just remembered one more thing about the Tilda Swinton show. Um, <sighs> yeah, sure. In that first episode where they all climb into bed with mom and dad, Maggie actually says something. It's the first time we actually hear Maggie speak. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. She, she goes, says, what the? She actually I, says dada or papa or something. Yeah. Oh, really? That's what mm. I got out of that. Editing by Elliot J here to say that apparently Maggie says goodnight, and that is also the name of this sketch. All right, anyway, back to the show. So the last segment of this show is, yeah, the deleted scenes. Who's got a deleted scene that stood out to them? We'll start with you, Jordan. Oh, I mean, it's got to be the robot Richard Simmons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just, and then it, Smith is just pulling a shotgun out of his jacket and shooting it, and then it t 1000 ing its yeah. head, like, back into thing, and then, all right, girls, let's dance. <laughs> awesome. It's like... Shake some butter off those buns. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah, that one I know is definitely not in the original episode because I'm like, wait, yeah, I remember the bees and the dogs. and But I do think it was a bees. genuine deleted scene and not one just made for you reckon? the thing. You think? Because you actually see the outline of the door that Richard Simmons comes Ooh. out of in that scene where, he, uh, where Homer's like yelling at him like, oh, so do your worst, you know? And then... That's the door that he actually comes out of and deleted. The deleted scenes, like, because they take the episodes to test audiences as well. And sometimes they'd be longer and whatever. And they'd use those test audience screenings to figure out what they were going to cut. And this was famously one of them that just fell on, like, just deathly silent in the test audiences. Yeah. And they those were like, guys don't know shit. Seriously. <laughs> hey, exactly. come on. Face that, of comedy. We, if this was Teens Era and they stuck that in there, yeah, that's we would true. probably be like, oh, this is so stupid. Well, I mean, it does go on for a while and that mm. episode is already so jam-packed you could understand, okay, yeah, this is a pretty easy thing for them to remove. But yeah, it has just become so beloved because of this thing. Yeah. How about you, Claire? Was the deleted scene that you liked out of this? Oh, I mean, the Richard Simmons one is obviously mm -hmm. up yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> it was a lot of time spent on the Mr. Burns one as well. And I like that the Wayland Smithers one, which almost makes way more sense than Maggie Simpson like being one that shot him, 
mm. is very quickly like shot down by Troy McClure as well. It's like, yeah. you'd have to ignore all the Simpson DNA evidence, which would be plain stupid. <laughs> and I feel like somebody obviously took a dig at them for like, oh, the baby shot him. And now they're like <laughs> shooting them oh, down. Yeah? Like, oh, yeah, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> I did love that scene of like all the people like Tita Puente and Apu and like, yeah. with a, like a machine gun but Mr. Burns is doing the same like oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> like every single time it was good I remember this was very satisfying for my family to see because like our big theory before we got it spoiled for it that it was Santa's little helper um, ah. that shot, oh, and, that. and the fact that they decided to animate it like was really satisfying <laughs> yeah. for us how did he pull the trigger like with his tongue maybe uh, how did the uh, baby pull the trigger <laughs> oh yeah dog tongue i mean <laughs> she definitely got whipped in the face by the recoil like let's <laughs> let's be real i don't know man maggie's a little badass like, <laughs> yeah it's true but yeah it's funny that they went to the effort to animate all these ones especially when the guns wouldn't have made sense to the scene no like yeah mm-hmm. apu's little like what was it like fucking mini it was like a Ooh. submachine gun yeah yeah <laughs> mo with a fucking 12 gauge yeah, he shotgun him. Eleven and three quarters. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that a Leslie Nielsen movie? <laughs> Thirty-three and a third. Yeah. How about you, Danny? Is the what deleted scene did you like that hasn't been said yet? <laughs> yeah, you can't pick any of the ones that have already been taken. Oh, what's left? Apu. Oh yeah, that With was that... probably the one that fell flat for me. Yeah, the Bollywood movie. Yeah, it kind of felt like laughing at Bollywood. Yeah, their clothes are different from my clothes. Huh? Which is fine-ish. It's, it's not funny. I'm yeah, glad that I mean, they took it out, though. You can clearly make the point that they're laughing at racists more than... Mm. Of course! The crusty sex book! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After, yeah. I mean, Madonna's one was very popular and did very well for her, so it's why true. not? It's true. He is the Madonna of children's TV. Do you think she used a fake butt? She has a fake butt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> solid point. That, that's actually Two funny solid because points. This... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, crusty sex book was actually cut from syndication. So oh my gosh! Double deleted scene, <laughs> and then like the FBI escorting him away. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Can I be hemorrhoid sufferer number one? <laughs> oh, I wish they'd kept that part in. That was oh. great. <laughs> oh, I can ride a horse again. <laughs> or ride a bike again. That's I right. can ride a bike again. Yes. <laughs> Such relief. <laughs> well, yeah, I was trying to drop you the hint, but I think I point to the note above that. But no, the uh, James Bond scene from uh, oh, yeah. Dollar Pringfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, could dollar sign her? Yeah. <laughs> dollar Pringfield <laughs> and a dollar app Rocky. Yeah, mm. you guys, you guys. I like the um, I like the James Bond scene. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> although like he's allowed to keep drawing. Why did they take him away? He didn't lose yet. Well, you know, <laughs> villains be villainy. Yeah, he yeah. had his chance. They redrew the Joker's card. Yeah, yeah. Can that's you at least it. Tell me your plan. Like, oh, oh, I'm not falling for that one again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the only other two deleted scenes were from the Mona Simpson episode where uh, you don't have to wolf down that 25-year-old oh, candy to make me oh, happy. Yes, I love that. It wouldn't episode. make you wouldn't unhappy. Make unhappy, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's like a nice little moment that could have easily gone in the episode that I'm surprised didn't, you know. Mm. I also liked how um, he's just like, ooh, space fruit sticks. Did you know I was in space, Mom? <laughs> yeah, it's national news. <laughs> and then like how she goes on to go, do you still work for NASA? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like hopeful, but doubtful as well. Yeah. <laughs> I work for the nuclear power plant. Oh, oh Homer. Homer. <laughs> I don't work very hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing it down from the inside. Yep. And we get a bit more of an expanded scene from the Devil and Homer Simpson segment of Treehouse of Horror. Yeah. Yep. When Homer found out hell wasn't all it was cracked up to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Troy's other line going into the deleted scenes. Troy, I've seen every episode. You can't show me anything new. Well, you've got some attitude, mister. <laughs> yeah. The way he just like leans in, it's so yeah. menacing. And I love, well, I didn't win. Here's your pizza. But we did win. It's okay. The box is empty. <laughs> but stop teasing the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that about does it. Is there anything else about the show you guys want to mention? Oh, yeah. In the almond shorts, when they go side on and they would talk, they would get massive shark teeth. Like, their mouth would open, like, almost all the way up to their oh, ear, yeah. and yeah. they'd get that shark look. And, like, Marge was particularly scary in those. Yeah, Marge is pretty terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
They had weird picture frames, I think Shaggy pointed it out first. Yeah. There's just like a bumpy leg in one of them. Yeah. And like a Homer from the back, the back like of, of his, his head. head with his hat blowing off. One of Marge like peeking around the camera. Yeah. yeah kind of like in the corner of the photo yeah. almost like she's falling Doing down. Doing like a window peek. Yeah. And in the bath time one, there's like a very prototype sea captain in one of the frames. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What, like that's what you want in your toilet. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Old sea captain photo. <laughs> yeah. You know, yes. water. Sea, sea captain. captain. <laughs> Claire, we're getting an old sea captain to put in our bath to- bathroom. Mm. Just an old sea captain? Yes. Just an old guy. Just You stand in the corner. It's yeah. like one you of those. say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Look grizzled. Yeah. He just yeah. holds like soaps for you. Mm. Yeah. That'd be nice. I also liked um, Don't tip him one of the notes I forgot to bring up when we were talking about the shorts. Or he'll be dancing <laughs> for hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the notes I forgot to bring up before with the shorts was the impersonation that Maggie did of Bart when they were trying like, oh, yeah. stole the cookies, Maggie, and she's there like taking her pacifier out and pushing her hair up. <laughs> yeah, you know? somebody ate those cookies. Gremlin-y face. <laughs> yeah, I liked it there. Go, Maggie. Go find him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're here. Like anyone else have anything else to say about this? Yeah, the hardcore nudity at the very end <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It was just nudity. like all man ass. It was Mostly all butts. <laughs> so many cheeks. Oh, there was, there was a pretty sexy oh, Marge. thing of Marge. Oh, yeah. yeah. She was quite revealed in that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got a little bit of Marge under boob. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And like hip. Some curve. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, no underwear hip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty. Kept you going. <laughs> got a cameo from Dr. Cheeks in this as well. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was man. about to say, they draw a lot. Of faces on their asses yeah. in The Simpsons. <laughs> it's, it's a high of comedy. It's three. classic. Yeah. It's in clown school. It's like lesson one. Uh, <laughs> Elliot, yeah. tell us about your time in clown school. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much hardcore nudity, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to ask. Yes or no? Would you watch it again? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, Wise guy, huh? let's rank it. Jordan. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> me. Set the pace. Um. Uh, 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 okay. For me, it's not cubic. It is not essential because, like, it's a DVD extra. There's a lot of good stuff in it, but it's not like an episode that I'm like, I want to watch because it's really funny. It's more interesting than it is like supremely funny. You'd never and say, it, "Oh, you need to see this." Yeah, it's bonus content, and that's cool. But it's not a uh, cubic. Then it's hard whether I go gold or silver because a lot of it is stuff that's from an, another episode. Where if you want to see, it, you can just watch that episode, and that's funny. It's hard to rank it on just the stuff that's new. And the Tracy Ullman shorts, they're just almost a history lesson of this is where they started. You can see a bit of a progression with certain things, but it is still a clip show. Uh, fuck. My heart says silver immediately. Um, I love that song. My heart says silver no. immediately tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with silver. It's towards a gold, but I think because it is a clip show and so it is limited by the format, it doesn't have enough opportunity to kind of tell a story or like put in a bunch of new funny material. So yeah, silver. Yeah, I'm going silver as well. I think the thing that's stopping me from making this higher is that the Ullman shorts actually aren't that funny. Like they're mm. just yeah. like I think you put it past Jordan, they're just sort of interesting. It's mm. a short about Bart steals the cookies from the cookie jar. And, yeah. Maybe uh, at the time when it was less sophisticated, maybe it'd be like kind of cuter or funnier. Although I feel like Troy McClure's reactions are designed to be the audience yeah. reactions yeah. to be like, no, it's okay. You don't have to find this funny, but here you go anyway. Here's some more crap. Yeah. And I think like the Bath Bart was like probably the best out of all of them. And even yeah. though I only just like it because he says the wily and elusive washcloth. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because the second segment is all clips that like brought me down to a bronze. But then I really liked all but a couple of the deleted scene stuff. Yeah. And I yeah found the Mr. Burns stuff pretty fascinating. And uh, the framework was wonderful. It was yeah. so good. Yeah, it worked really well. But giving it a gold, like, I just can't do that. But a silver because uh, there it is a clip show. It is a well put together package. Claire. I think I distinctly remember myself saying that you really can't do a clip show that's going to be higher than like a participant or a bronze because it's just rehashing old material. Yeah. Well, the good thing about this one is that even though there is a lot of previously used clips, they put a lot of effort into tying it together in a really well yeah. thought out structure. They actually do provide a lot of 
old clips that you wouldn't have seen, like old shorts or deleted scenes. So like you said, it is really interesting. Even the parts that aren't laugh out loud funny, it's interesting. And you know what? I don't want to downgrade it for using shorts because the shorts themselves aren't funny because I think that Troy's reaction to the shorts are where you get the laughs. Yeah. Yeah. They understand that those are not gag-driven shorts, Mm. so they make the effort to put more gags into their new material or the episode format. I'm actually going to go for gold. Oh, wow. I know we were saying it's not essential, and I understand that in the sense of it's not really adding anything to the overarching Simpsons. However, I think actually if you were an avid Simpsons fan or you were watching it through for the first time and and trying to get the most out of it without having to watch every single episode, this would actually be really fun. Like you said, it's really interesting. And it is funny enough and has enough of that classic Simpsons humor that I really love that I would definitely put this on my must-see list. Wow. Mm. And Danny, you're finishing it. Finish it. You know, I think I'm going to go gold as well. I love you, babe. Uh, Yes. (laughs) I'm sort of thinking it through, and yeah, there's a bunch of old material, and yet it's one that was still really fun for us to watch, even 20, 30 years later, and it's also one that I still think I'm going to enjoy watching that one again, and how can I say that after, I'm sure I've seen it a hundred times, and I've seen all those episodes a hundred times, you know, it's not just I've seen this episode, I've seen it to the power of square rooted, you know, yeah. squared, but they're brought in with such a like a tongue in cheek, like looking at yourself and the framework is really fun and interesting and witty and like really like tongue in cheek, like all the right wing stuff, all the letters from the doctors, all the shots of um graining and the other guys. I mean, there's so much there that's that's really like tight and witty Mm -hmm. and Mm. I can't think of anything I didn't like about it. I think not that I need to justify myself at all. I think the two reasons that brought it down to silver for me, one, I think if you hadn't seen most of the clips where the clips come from in the context of the episode, they wouldn't be as good Mm. if you were just watching them. Mm. And the second thing is, yes, I would watch it again, but with every other gold and cubic, I could watch again straight away and still find funny. This one, I wouldn't watch again straight away. Like, I couldn't watch it again for another six months or something because, like, yeah, yeah, I know I've seen it and it's not, like, a funny story. It's just the clip show. So I think, yeah, for me, that's why it kind of pulled it down. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't have the replay value for my gold, certainly, but totally understand the justifications. I suppose, like, for me... I could say, yeah, the replay value isn't really there. Like, once you've seen the cool little shorts and stuff, Mm. you don't really need to watch it again. But we have watched it again, all of us. Yeah. Heaps and heaps of times. And we all said we'd watch it again. So it must have some replay value there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean more like it's not going to be on a constant repeat for me as opposed to like most other golds. I'd be like, yeah, I'd watch that again tomorrow. Like, I still think Mm -hmm. it's funny. Yeah. In a way, I almost want to give it like a not applicable like like because i mean part of it is yeah it's funny the framework but the rest of it it's like watching a documentary on the simpsons you know the past and the future of the simpsons and what the outtakes and what could have been and and it's like with documentaries they're not rated m or a pg or even g they're rated like not applicable for rating yeah yeah you know i think look going into a clip show you have to rate it differently from a normal Mm, episode mm. i have to do a questionnaire differently (laughs) (laughs) exactly and like the last clip show we did together that i remember was you know the all singing all dancing one and there were judgments that you could make even in the clip show format firstly the story that they had to piece together was kind of bullshit and also some of the clips they chose didn't make sense over other ones that they could have chosen and it was an exhausting watch as well just to see song after song after song after song whereas this one they segmented into three very distinct acts. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But averaging out, this will be a dull gold, and I feel that's pretty appropriate yeah. for <laughs> it. It'll be joining episodes from across all three eras, like season one's There's No Disgrace Like Home, where they electrocute Maggie, uh, and um, yeah. Life on the Fast Lane with Shuck. Also, yep. Old Money, which we reviewed with you, Jordan, the oh, other yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, B, B. Gra- Grandpa's Girlfriend. Yep. Mm. Krusty Gets Cancelled, which one of the deleted scenes was from yeah, this week. Yeah. Mm. Also from the teens, Homer Simpson in Kidney Trouble. The- I liked Kidney Trouble. Mm. I- I he guess is such is- a jerk, though. <laughs> yeah. No, he's but I human. I silvered that one, but you silvered the Max Power episode. <laughs> you what? <laughs> yes, I know. Get out. 
worst episode ever where comic book guy and Agnes start dating. Oh, it's weird. That, yeah. that is such a fucking good episode. <laughs> I stand by that. And also the highest ranking HD era episode, The oh, Good yeah. and the Sad and the Drugly. I want to watch that again to see if I was high that time because <laughs> I enjoyed it so much that yep. I'm like, this is not right. Something's wrong. Maybe I was the one, the Drugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't quite believe that there is a good HD episode it's out weird, there. Yeah. So like, it We was. need to do like a cross comparison test so we like take a dull gold from each <laughs> each era yeah. we take like you know yeah, the sure, Simpsons yeah. Index Index the podcast come after we oh, finish doing Simpsons no. Index yeah they seem like all very different dull golds as well but don't they yeah but even the good and the sad and the drug league like that was one where I hated Lisa's moral of the story because it ended up being very anti anti-depressants mm-hmm. yeah oh that was the smiley face one wasn't it yeah, yeah uh, everything was smiley face everything else was good around but love story god yeah, and he realized the real love was Millhouse that he yeah. made along the way. <laughs> anyway, nice. all right, guys, that's about it. But before we get out of here, we like to quickly talk about things that we're into these days. Books, TV, podcasts, film, music. Uh, what's around here? Panels. Can... Salt and pepper shakers. Mm. Uh, alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor degrees. What are you into? We'll start with you, Claire. Oh. <laughs> we already talked about this. Yeah, I don't know if this has been cut or not. <laughs> But I've been rewatching like a lot of my old favorite sitcoms recently. Mm-hmm. I went through The Nanny, and I mean, the first seasons were still funny, but the later ones don't hold up. But recently, I've been redoing Frasier, and I just fucking love it. It's fun. <laughs> it's really wonderful. Good. The Nanny is really hilarious if you go through it pretending she's Bugs Bunny. She is, is she essentially. Is, she yeah. is Bugs Bunny. All right, so recommending for Frasier and watching <laughs> The Nanny but with a new filter. But yeah. don't watch the last season. Was it the last season it six? It was like the last three seasons. Oh, yeah. The one where real. she jumps over the shark in a motorbike. Yeah, no, they get stranded on a desert island after getting marooned. Oh, oh and his shirt room. rips God. open like Fabio. That sounds oh, bad. Like garbage. How but about- Frasier's good. How about you, Jordan? What are you into? He's watching Frasier with me because <laughs> yeah. I control the TV. <laughs> uh, well, we're about one eighth of the way through a little known show called One Piece, uh, which is oh, Dan's yeah. favorite anime of all time. Oh, you're dropping me in this, are you? Yeah, well, it is. Is it not your favorite anime of all time? Remember when I said <laughs> quickly recommend yeah, sorry. things or okay. into? <laughs> all right, so One Piece is great, but on a, uh, a gaming... No, you only get one. Okay. Keep moving. Well, I just started playing God of War, and it's pretty fun, and I'm enjoying it way more than The Witcher 3, so I'm returning The Witcher 3. Oh, wow. Sorry, CD Projekt Red. It was too much at once, and I just didn't enjoy it, and I hate, I usually hate hand-to-hand combat anyway, but God of War has changed that, and I really like it, so mm. go me. And it's always satisfying, throwing the axe and just, oh, crap, yep, catching exactly. it. Cool. Danny, what are you into? I recently saw Sex, Love, Death, Robots, Fucking, and Robots. Oh, I started that the it other night. It is the fucking best thing I've ever seen. Every single episode is so unique. Like, they're all standalones by different directors. They're all in really different, like, art style, directing style, production style, in genre style. They're all, like, A, triple plus storytelling and they're shocking and confronting and there's so many episodes where I was literally on the edge of my seat and just being like stunned and straight away I had to jump online and talk to Beach and be like Beach, 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 Beach and he's like yeah I know man I know and I was like ah and he's like ah it is amazing there's only like 10 of them so everyone lean into the mic and scream ah ah it's so good Awesome. I actually just started that last night. The first episode where robots walking around the nuclear wasteland. Oh, yeah. Fucking loved it. Have you done the one uh, with the farmers yet? First episode only. Oh, yeah, that was a great yeah. episode. They're all great episodes. Everybody go watch it. It's amazing. So speaking of Netflix, it was just announced the other day that Tuka and Birdie is cancelled. This is a fucking dumb and short-sighted decision. This is one of my favourite shows, if not my favourite show of this year. The heck's Tuka and Bruka? Birdie. Tuka and Birdie. It's made by a lot of the same team behind BoJack Horseman. Hashtag save Tuka and Birdie. It is so, so good. Save it for Elliot, guys. Even if you don't want to watch it, that's the one that's like two, like kind of 30 something bird ladies, like yeah. living together, right? Okay. Honestly, Claire, I think you'd really enjoy it. It is such a wonderful show, and for it to be cut down on only its first season is tragic and mm. so short sighted. So, especially please. since Netflix pours so much money and so much garbage. The day after they announced they cancelled that, they renewed Big Mouth for three more seasons. And what? it's like, what? <laughs> They've made a couple of terrible 
decisions lately. So besides throwing my love behind Tuca and Birdie, which is something that not only I've recommended, but a lot of guests on the podcast have, our friends over at Baby Beard Media have just launched a new podcast which is like a role-playing series it's called roll to cast going mainstream it's a tabletop game that's set in like the cyberpunk universe and it is amazing they're sort of half hour episodes they're like three four episodes in by the time this goes out and it's such a goddamn fun time and i'm not usually a fan of uh, rpg podcast D podcast sort of I'm not good at absorbing them, but they've made a way to keep this one really engaging uh, and the characters are, that they've developed are wonderful. It is so much fun. Awesome. And cool. that about does it for the Simpsons Index for this week. Thank you guys for having me here. Thank you, Claire. You're very welcome anytime. Thank you, Jordan. No probs, bud. And thank you, Danny. I'm Danny Rosewell. <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> and I've been your host, Elliot Jaranil. That's all the mustard in the tomb. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the mustard squeezing oh, out. Right. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash thesimpsonsindex or at Simpsons Index on Twitter and Instagram. And now please stay tuned for the bonus scenes. I do actually have... Oh, has Beach supplied you with one from earlier? Is that reputation justified? You tell me. <laughs> Sounds like he's got a peg on his nose when he was singing at that time. You tell me. <laughs> Robert David Sutherland. Oh man, I like the old hold me back boys bit, but that's been done a thousand times. It's hardly breaking new grounds. Yeah, but- yeah. If, oh, remember Newgrounds? If it had been like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remember Better Entertainment? <laughs> uh, <laughs> kangaroo penises are like have an S bend in them. It's really weird. Cool. Yeah, they're mm. um like a, the plumbing. What's the word for when you can move them? Um, a, a prehensile. Prehensile. Oh, oh, panthers have prehensile dicks. They use them to hang yeah. from the trees and, and ensnare their prey. Now tell yeah. me about the ducks. Oh yeah, there's an ongoing. Don't tell me about race the ducks. War <laughs> about <laughs> duck dick and duck vagina. It's uh. No, thanks. Quite interesting. He gave this episode a C plus. This is actually okay. Ooh, good programming yeah. language. Yeah. Um, Lenny's a bit of a weirdo. He's like, Are you drawing a wang on Marmaduke? Oh, and then that whole fucking extended this is exactly what fucking they Sudoku brought is. Sudoku to a grinding halt, didn't they? Yeah. I was just drawing wangs in the boxes. Fucking fuck. Oh, on the numbers. Which I'm kind of curious to see. Where do you draw the dick on the number two, for example? Just oh, like hanging from the, oh, from the bottom. Wait, where? which animal were you saying that <laughs> an S is kind of a two? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kangaroo dick. <laughs> oh, see, I wouldn't have put it there. I would have been hanging it from the bottom. Oh, no. Okay, fine. That's Depends fine. how That's excited it is. Oh, exactly. No, they're doing a callback to another episode where they go 33% new footage. Cotties, 33% real fruit. <laughs> you know, my dad picks the fruit that goes to Cotties. <gasps> that makes the cordial that we like best. <laughs> All together now. No. Ma- <laughs> Damn, I was so ready for that one. Our American yeah. audience isn't going to get that. No, but they should. They should. Look it up, guys. And the schoolyard chant. My dad picks his bum and makes it snotty. I don't know. I don't yeah, picks something. his nose that goes to snotties. Yeah. yeah. Oh, picks his nose. That makes way more sense. <laughs> you don't have yeah. snot in butt. <laughs> no. That's one Who thing I've learned. Who picks your bum anyway? <laughs> um. <laughs> and we can hear Claire. Yes. Ooh. Into the mic, sweetie. Eat it. I suppose Into it could that normally. Into the mic. Oh, have you guys heard eat it, but every other beat is beat it? No. Actually, yes. I think I have. Wow, it feels so up to the minute. Eat, beat, eat, beat, eat, beat. But they're the same song. I know. Yeah, but the key centers are a tritone apart. What? Why would Weird Al do that? <laughs> Anyway, that's very upsetting. Oh.